Color. Joe Martinez, thank you. And Sherm has paid us a visit. Don't here. you miss him? Oh, what a character he was. Great man, great stories. Well, let's have a great ball game here tonight as the Orioles and the Red Sox play the first of three over two days. Brian Roberts to the box. My pleasure now to turn things over to Joe Angel. All right, Fred, thank you. What a night at Fenway. T- temperature, what they say, 79 degrees at game time? Yeah, very nice, very oh, comfortable. Lovely. Indeed, Brian Roberts uh, standing just outside the batter's box. Pedro Martinez all set to go. Martinez here tonight looking for his seventh consecutive victory. Delivers to Roberts and a little bit low and inside for ball one. There's so much talk about Kurt Schilling in Boston this season that Martinez a little bit forgotten. There's a ground ball foul off to the right. One and one now to Brian Roberts and yet Pedro comes in here tonight a record of 10 and 3. And he comes in with a 364 ERA. And again among the leaders in the American League in strikeouts. There's a good breaking ball in there and a beauty. That's a call strike. One and two now to Brian Roberts. Yeah, Martinez with 120 strikeouts. Which is third in the American League. There's a swing and a foul ball right there at the plate. Of course Pedro who's changes speeds very effectively. And in particular on the fastball. And over his career he has gone eight and three against the Orioles. Now the next offering on the way swing and a miss and he got him on a change up. So Martinez strikes out Roberts and this how this one gets started and Fred Martinez got a few extra days off around the All-Star break and uh, at least so far it looks like it's paid off for him. Yeah he got seven days went back to the Dominican kind of recharged the batteries and when he made his first start after the All-Star break in Anaheim was throwing in the mid 90s 95 96 consistently. Now here's David Newhan Martinez delivers to him and just misses outside. Big moment here for David Newhan. He has never faced Pedro Martinez, a future Hall of Famer. As interesting as David came out onto the field here at Fenway Park. Here's the next offering. Swing and a miss. Change up there. Kind of absorbing all the atmosphere of this ballpark. He looked out there at the green monster. Because the batting cages here at Fenway are out in center field beneath the stands. And now Martinez delivers one and one to Newhan and it takes a breaking ball inside. So you have to make the journey from the third base side dugout all the way across the field. And I think as you cross that field you can feel the presence of uh, guys like Williams and the the uh, little breaking ball grounded foul outside first base. The other greats who played their game here at uh, Boston's Fenway Park. Well, Pedro has David Newhan with a count of two balls and two strikes and somebody and I'm sure he knows with his sense of baseball history that Fenway Park has always been an outstanding left hand hitters ballpark. 2 2 pitch on the way is a shot one half to short right there Bellhorn on to first to get the end. And boy new hand almost beat that one out. And that's what you have to love about that kid. Oh, I say kid. Remember he is 30 years old now. But man you're talking about hustling all the way. Well that's one thing you, that has really just been an eye opener for me you know you, you look at his numbers in there you figure he can hit surprising power that he's shown at the big league level but the speed is something that uh, really I didn't expect. Yeah now here's Melvin Moore. I mean, that was a one hop line drive to short right to the shortstop and new hand almost beat it out. And now Moore takes a fastball outside one ball and no strikes. Melvin Moore who has always struggled against Pedro Martinez. He's only two for 18 lifetime against the right hand. Now here's the one other delivery bunted and he bunts it foul back behind the plate and back in the lower deck. One and one now to Melvin Mora. Melvin who has gone three for 12 with a home run since his return. Mora with 13 home runs this season knocked in 44 runs. One and one the count to him. Martinez delivers fastball right there at the knees. That's a call strike. And I mean at the knees on the outside edge. And for Melvin Mora that would have been a very tough pitch to get to. I mean that's just perfect location. One and two now to Melvin. And here comes the pitch. Fouled away. Back out of play. We talked about Pedro. Yeah his last start very impressive against Anaheim. Mentioned he's won six straight. Last time he lost back on May 16th in a game against the Toronto Blue Jays. 
Melvin waits on a one two pitch Martinez standing tall into his motion and now delivers. fastball got him looking and he got him at the knees on the outside corner and for Pedro Martinez another perfect pitch and it gets him one two three with a couple of strikeouts and now the Red Sox are coming up right now it's a nothing nothing game now Bedard will pitch to Johnny Damon and then Mark Bellhorn and then David Ortiz nothing nothing game here Bedard ready delivers and Damon after feigning a bunt he takes low instead one ball and no strikes Johnny Damon a batting average of 310 you got to be careful with this guy he can hit one out against you here's the pitch very high fastball the count you know he's hit 12 home runs this season and he's knocked in 48 runs so far this year Johnny Damon who is bearded once again Here's the 2-0 delivery. Fastball in there. That's a call strike. Well, he had a shave for charity, and he said he'll do it again and uh, let that beard grow a little bit, make a lot of money for the needy folks in the Boston area. And now the lefty Bedard ready delivers again, 2-1, and one, and uh, Damon takes it low and outside. Ball three. So three and one again. Damon, for the Red Sox, has been very consistent, although he got to a slow start this year, but... Once he turned it on, he has kept it on. Lefty against lefty. Here's the 3 1 delivery. Fastball, a called strike on the inside corner. They count 3 and 2 now. Damon, over his last 62 games, hitting just under 340 for that stretch. And right now, leads the American League in run scored. He, along with Vladimir Guerrero, they're tied for that leadership. Now he swings and fouls it away. 3 and 2 here to Johnny Damon. And Fred Eric Bedard can use a break these days. Yeah, he's pitched well, but has nothing to show for it because his ball club has been shut down literally by the other pitchers the last couple of starts. Yeah, last two starts, Orioles in the run column, nothing. 3 2 pitch on the way, little chopper, first base side, but foul. You know, we've talked time and time again about how Orioles struggle against left handed pitching. I'd check to see how the Boston Red Sox are doing against Southpaws. Well, pretty good, aren't they? As a team, they hit 285. They mm -hmm. are 17 and 14 against left-handers. 11 and 5 here at Fenway Park. Ah, big deal. <laughs> Three-two pitch on the way. He walked them. Ah, the old base on balls. To get a game started, and you know how I feel about those bases on balls. Don't you? They're scary. So Damon gets aboard. He's had 11 steals so far this year. And now Bellhorn up there to hit with nobody out. Throw the first, too late. Usually you go, uh oh. Usually, yeah. yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> what was that again? Uh oh. Yeah, that's what I thought. You see that leadoff walk? That's the reaction. Bellhorn, a right hand hitter in 266. Getting a chance to play some shortstop here tonight. Garcia Parra being rested. Bulky Reese has gone on the 15 day DL for Boston. And Bellhorn takes a strike. He caught the outside corner. As we heard from Joe Castiglione, the Red Sox have acquired Ricky Gutierrez from the Chicago Cubs today for future considerations. And we expect to see him at shortstop in one of the two games tomorrow. Nothing and one to Mark Bellhorn. Bedard appears in for a sign. Middle of the infield double play death here. Bedard a look at first base. Here comes a pitch and Bellhorn chops it slowly. Third base side. Tough chance. Mora gloves it and he has no play. Well, Melvin Mora backed up at third base. Bellhorn chopped it up that third base line. A slow dribbler inside the foul line. And by the time Mora got to it. It was too late, so he wisely held the ball. But the Red Sox are in business now. They have runners on first and second with nobody out. And now the big boys are coming up to hit him. We talked about Bedard and the lack of run support for him. His last start, he was beaten by Tampa Bay 2 to nothing, And the start before that, the Orioles lost 7 to nothing to Kansas City. So tonight, Bedard trying to get back in the win column. But now he goes against David Ortiz, a very dangerous slugger, who has hit 26 home runs 
and has knocked in more runs than anybody in the American League. Here's the pitch. Fastball just off the outside corner. And Bedard and the catcher Javi Lopez, they were not very happy about that call. It looked like a pretty good pitch. And one thing you don't want to do, Fred, is get behind a guy like David Ortiz, but Bedard at that time did not get the call. Now the lefty, you look at second, here comes a pitch. Fastball again just off the outside corner. Well, as you might expect with that number of uh, runs driven in for Ortiz, he does pretty well with runners in scoring position, especially so with less than two down, hitting close to 400 with less than two out and runners at second and third. And of course, uh, Johnny Damon standing out there at second base right now. Well, Ortiz has knocked in 87 runs, and that does lead the league. He also leads the league in doubles and in extra base hits. Here comes a 2 0 delivery swing and a miss. Fastball at about 88 miles an hour. And Ortiz went right through it. So he got the fastball he was looking for on 2 0, but couldn't find it. Lefty against lefty. Melvin Mora backed up at third base. Tejada and Roberts at double play position. Palmero right now behind the base runner at first base. Ortiz waits. Here comes a pitch, and uh, that is in there at the knees. That's a call strike. It looked like Bedard took something off that pitch on two and one. So Ortiz got a fastball on two and zero, oh, and then he got the change up on two and one. So right now Bedard mixing it up. Ortiz digs in again. Here comes a two-two delivery swing and a miss. Struck came out. And he went right back to a fastball. He came in 88 miles an hour, and it was a good location for a power hitter, but he just blew it by him. Well, that's a pretty good job of changing speeds, and a good job by Javi Lopez, too. On 2 and 0, oh, he got the fastball by him, and then he threw him a changeup, and then he went right back to a fastball at a time where Ortiz, I'm sure, had to be wondering what might be coming next. Yeah, you get into the hitter's head that way, and you have the advantage, at least psychologically. Now here's Manny Ramirez. Now a double play ball can get Bedard and the Orioles out of the inning. But this guy Manny Ramirez has also had a phenomenal season. 27 home runs to lead the league. And he's knocked in 78 runs. And here comes a pitch. And Ramirez takes a good fastball for a call strike. Well he has hit into a dozen double plays and that leads the Boston Ball Club. And he has been uh, slowed down a bit because he missed several games at the start of the second half because of pulled hamstring muscles both legs. Left hander against right hander Melvin Mora backed up way behind the bag at third base. They're giving Ramirez a big gap in right center. Here's a pitch and in there for a call strike two. A fastball at about 90 miles an hour. And suddenly Ramirez in a huge hole at nothing and two here. Bedard standing tall. Peers in Javi Lopez flashing signs. Ramirez inside the box with very much of a square stance. Takes a couple of practice swings. Staring out toward Bedard. And now Bedard wants to see the signs again. And uh, Ramirez backs away. He makes a U turn. And he'll take a short walk. So a little waiting game going on out there right now. And now Ramirez back in there. Bedard peers in. Damon. And Bellhorn on base with only one out. And here comes the pitch. Fastball low and inside a ball. So he showed him a fastball, but he did not give him a pitch to hit. On 0 and 2. So now on 1 and 2, let's see if he throws Ramirez a change up here. Trying to get him on the front foot. Ramirez 7 for 24 against Oriole pitching this season. As he stands in. Bedard ready. Here comes the 1-2 delivery. Fastball. Fouled the way. This one off to the right. And I think Ramirez might have had change up in the back of his mind because on that fastball he was late. And yeah, 90 miles an hour from Bedard. And as you said that uh, swing was a little tardy. Now it's very difficult for a hitter to sit on a change up. But if it's in the back of your mind. It can make you late on a fastball. And I think that's what Manny did there. But the count stays at one and two. No score, nothing, nothing. We're in the bottom of the first inning. As Bedard looks in, and the young left hander says yes. Ramirez digs in. 
And now the lefty ready. Sets at the chest. As he delivers to Ramirez, he jammed him. And the ball fouled away back behind the plate. Another 90 mile an hour fastball. And right now, Bedard staying with that fastball. That time, Ramirez a little closer to making good contact, but still a little bit late. He was not right on it. One and two now to Ramirez. Yeah, Ramirez bothered by hamstring problems just prior and just after the All-Star break. But back in there for Boston now. Bedard delivers, and he misses outside with the ball. And those hamstring problems cost a lot of ink here in the papers in Boston because a lot of people are questioning why he could play in the All-Star game, but yet not start the second half of the season and sit out several ball games. Well, as Ramirez said, an All-Star game is different. It's a once-a-year thing. And he felt that if he could play in the All-Star game, that's what he was going to do. And he hit a home run in the All-Star game, too. Now the fastball misses high and outside. So three and two now to Manny Ramirez. And we'll see what Terry Francona does here with the base runners. Ramirez will strike out, but he also hits for a high average. And right now, among the leaders with a batting average of 342. So when he does make contact, generally he finds holes out there. He stands in Bedard. Big moment right here. Young left hander at the belt. As he delivers, there go the runners in a swing, a little chopper foul toward the third base dugout. So they do send the runners, but Damon back to second and Bellhorn back to first. We'll talk about Eric Bedard and the fact that he has been very much a tough luck kind of a pitcher. His last two starts, the Orioles have been shut out. He's made 16 starts this season, and in five of them, the Orioles have gone into extra innings. He's also been affected adversely by other rain delays. So he's had a tough year, and yet the youngster has pitched extremely well. Now the lefty ready again, Ramirez waits. There go the runners, the 3 2 pitch on the way, swing and a miss. Throw to third, Mora was not at the bag. So Damon to third, and Bellhorn winds up at second base on a double steal. Ramirez struck out. Lopez fired the ball to third base, and Melvin Mora was not at the bag. Yeah, almost like it caught Melvin off guard, and uh, he received that throw from Javi Lopez some 15 feet behind third base. And now two runners in scoring position, two down. And you're right, that's what it looked like, but how can that happen? I mean, on the previous three and two pitch, the runners were going. And that time, Melvin Moore reacted as if he had no idea they were running. That's a mistake. We'll see if Bedard can overcome it. Here comes the pitch to Veritek. Swing a line drive in the left center. Tejada racing back. He jumps out, lunges, makes a one handed catch, and then falls on the grass and he holds the ball. Tejada racing back into shallow center. And then diving towards center field, and with every inch that he had in his body, he caught the ball in the webbing of the glove. He went down, and the ball stayed in the glove. A phenomenal play by Miguel Tejada, and Bedard does survive it. The Red Sox leave a couple of base runners, and at the end of one, it's a nothing nothing game. Now here's Miguel Tejada to get the second inning started. Miguel Tejada, Rafael Palmero, and then Javi Lopez, the uh, four, five, and six hitters against Pedro Martinez. Ready and delivers, and Tejada takes a strike on the outside corner. I think it's somewhere in the baseball rule book that after a player makes an outstanding catch, he leads off the next inning because generally you see that in the game. Here he is, Miguel. That was a, a phenomenal play by Tejada as Martinez misses low and outside, even up at one and one. Sometimes it can be very difficult from our vantage point here at Fenway Park. The broadcast booth is very high up. Here's the 1 1 delivery popped up here, right side, behind second base into shallow right center. Coming out is Johnny Damon, tapping the glove, and Damon makes the catch. Sometimes it can be difficult to decipher exactly where that ball might wind up. But on a kind of a looping line drive, to how to racing back into shallow center. And uh, he did not, Fred, he did not even have an extra tenth of an inch to spare. Now, a very acrobatic, athletic catch by Miguel Tejada to save a couple of runs. 
Now here's Palmero and he takes upstairs. Ball one. And not only Tejada was able to get there to give himself a chance, but when he dived towards center, he timed it beautifully. Anything else would not have been good enough. As Palmero takes ball two, two and zero. Oh. Rafael hitting 252. 13 home runs and 54 RBI. And he takes low. Now 3 0 the count to Palmero. And again, Red Sox with that defensive infield shift against Palmero. Euclid, the third baseman, is just to the left of second base. And there's a call strike to Palmero. The other guys, Bellhorn, Miller, and Millar, all to the right of second base. And here comes the pitch. Palmero takes strike two. Fastball called. And the count three and two. What's interesting in the outfield, Johnny Damon is playing Palmero in pretty much straightaway center field. Three two pitch on the way. Swung on, lifted, foul, back out of play. Now the shift that Boston has is even more pronounced than the one we saw at Kansas City because the shortstop, Mark Bellhorn, is well. To the right of second base. And uh, in Kansas City, Angel Burrow would play almost behind the bag at second. And now Martinez ready, delivers three and two. And Palmero on a changeup popped it up behind short. Coming on is Ramirez, and he will make the catch. High number two. Now before Javi Lopez comes up to hit. And right now it's a nothing nothing ball game. We'll pause for station identification on the Orioles radio net. Well, Javi Lopez got the off day in Kansas City as the pitch and the, takes a fastball for a call strike. So he did not play yesterday. The day before that, though, he had three hits and a couple of RBI. Takes a fastball low and outside. Of course, Javi will always have the memory of his first Orioles at bat, the first pitch he saw from Pedro Martinez at Camden Yards, a home run to get things underway in an Orioles uniform. And he has gone 10 for 28 against Pedro in his career with a couple of home runs. Now he'll back away momentarily. That's a lifetime batting average of 357 against Pedro Martinez. Not too many can claim that. A little breaking ball, and Lopez got a piece of it just off the end of the bat, a foul ball. Very interesting watching Martinez work in the first inning plus been a lot of off speed stuff a lot of curve balls his fastball one fastball 90 miles an hour the rest have been anywhere from 86 to 88 miles an hour so this is a little bit different pattern than he showed in Anaheim against the Angels yeah against the Angels uh, throwing in the mid 90s on several occasions Here's the one two delivery there's a high fastball it's kind of a show me fastball. That one clocked at 91 miles an hour. So the count two and two now to Javi Lopez. Nothing, nothing game. Top of the second here at Fenway Park. Martinez looks in. Lopez waits. Here comes the 2 2 pitch. Breaking ball way outside. Now three and two to count. Well, Pedro has gone this entire season and has not lost a game here at Fenway Park. He has loved that home cooking. He is 6 and 0 oh here with a 292 ERA this year. 3 2 pitch on the way. Change up. Swing and a miss. Strunk came out. And that's what makes him so tough. A change up on 3 and 2. And Javi Lopez way out in front. So now in Boston, we head to the bottom of the second. It's a nothing nothing game. Now the fans are at Fenway Park all yelling, you, 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 because. Kevin Euclid will lead off for Boston here against Eric Bedard. The left hander delivers, and Euclid takes a call strike. Euclid, and then Kevin Millar, and then Bill Miller. So the Millar Miller tandem coming up for Boston here. Euclid, a right hand hitter. Bedard delivers to him a big breaking ball and a beauty caught the outside corner. You know, Kevin just brought back up from Pawtucket. He was sent back down last Thursday, but uh, Euclid, along with uh, the left uh, left-hander Mark Malaska, brought up today by the Red Sox. Now here's the 0-2 delivery. Fastball backs him off the plate. Ramiro Mendoza was activated last Thursday, and Euclid went down, but he wasn't down there long. And of course, remember he came up in mid-May when Bill Miller went on the disabled list. Euclid spelled with one K. 
One two pitch on the way. Fastball popped up right side behind first base. Palmero drifting backward. And the second baseman Roberts right behind him. And just inside the foul line, Roberts makes the catch. So Euclid is gone. One gone. Now here's Kevin Millar. On the SK scoreboard in the American League in the second inning, it is Toronto nothing and the Yankees nothing. The Blue Jays with the second worst record in the American League. Only Kansas City has been worse. And of course, uh, Roy Halladay is now on the disabled list for that Toronto ball. Club. Millar takes it a little bit too low for a ball. Yeah, the Blue Jays are having a very disappointing season. I mean, last year they won almost 90 games. Here comes the 1 0 delivery, high fastball. The count 2 0 now to Kevin Millar. Yeah, the general manager last week, uh, JP Richardi, asked Carlos Delgado to give up his no trade rights, and Delgado said, No, I like it here in Toronto. <laughs> now here's the 2 0 delivery, fastball just off the outside corner. And that looked like a pretty good pitch. I'll tell you right now, Bedard, the played on by Jeff Kellogg, he is not getting the corners. At least not that time. Now the 3-0 uh, delivery has a letter high fastball. That's a call strike. So that time he does get the high strike. He'll take it. So the count three and one now to Kevin Millar. In that Toronto Yankee game, I saw a note earlier today about Bernie Williams. Here's the 3-1 uh, delivery, swung on, lifted, foul out of play. Bernie Williams, who of course uh, is aging a little bit on that Yankee ball club, but he goes into that game tonight with just two hits. In his last 40 at bats. That's amazing. Looking a lot older these days, I guess. There's a swing and a foul ball out of play off to the right. And with the season start for him with appendicitis, and yeah, he didn't yeah. go to Japan. This has not been a good year for Bernie. As far as the Yankees right now with a seven game division lead. Kevin Millar, three balls and two strikes. Nothing, nothing game here at Fenway Park in the bottom of the second inning. Bardar takes a look and now takes too much time. And Millar backs away at the plate. Also on the SK scoreboard in the third now, Texas with a 1 0 lead over Anaheim. And Millar takes low and inside for ball four. Second walk issued by Bedard. But this one comes with one out. And now the second baseman, Bill Miller, up there to hit. Now the Yankees will follow the Orioles here to Fenway Park for a three game weekend series. And um, the Boston Red Sox this year against New York in 10 games, six and four against the first place ball club. And now Bedard will go to work on Bill Miller. Here comes the pitch. Miller takes a fastball and he bounces it foul. Just over Dale Swaim in the coaching box at third base here for the Red Sox. So the count to Bill Miller is nothing and one here. Later in the American League tonight, Tampa Bay will be at Minnesota. The Devil Rays, after a split in that series against the Yankees, tonight they take on Minnesota. The Twins, by the way, now leading the American League Central. Bedard delivers 0 1. Miller on a changeup, and he takes it just outside. And again, very close. But again, Bedard does not get the call. Oakland will be at Seattle later. In the National League on the SK scoreboard, a big one in Philadelphia, the Marlins and the Phillies in the Eastern Division. But at first, it is too late. Florida is at Philadelphia, and right now that's a nothing nothing game in the third inning. Well, the Marlins and the Phillies, um, that's been a disparate uh, series between the two, with the Marlins just crushing them, haven't they? Boy, I'll say. Last couple of years, the Marlins have owned Philadelphia. Here comes the pitch, and Miller takes a good breaking ball in there for a call strike. Boy, that's a devastating breaking ball when it breaks that much. Miller just could not pull the trigger, and now in a hole in one and two. I think the Phillies have lost what 17 of the last 18 to Florida, and they're 0 and 6 against Florida so far this season. But the Phillies just have not been able to beat the teams that they have to beat in the Eastern Division so far this year. Here's the pitch and Miller swings and he sends a little fly ball into shallow right center. Matos in a little bit toward the infield, makes the catch, and then gets it back into second base. 
think a couple of days ago, I saw a note with the Phillies so far this season had gone something like 10 and 22 this year against the Mets, the Braves, and the Marlins. And yeah, very tough to win your division when you can't beat the teams in your division. So we'll see what happens there tonight. Now with two outs, here's Kepler. Here at Fenway Park, it's a nothing nothing ball game in the bottom of the second inning. Bedar delivers and Kapler, a right hand hitter, takes a good fastball for a call strike. In the second inning, the Expos nothing and the Mets nothing. In the third, the Pirates have taken a two to one lead over the Atlanta Braves. The Pirates playing some awfully good baseball these days. And so is Atlanta. Little pop up here off to the right, coming over Palmero near the first base dugout. In foul ground, he makes the catch and the side retired. So they leave a man, and at the end of two in Boston, it's a nothing nothing game. Right. At Fenway Park, let's tune into the public address announcer. Kareem Garcia. Well, Kareem Garcia getting the expected greeting. And let's get right to Fred Manfred here. Well, thanks a lot, Joe. Pedro Martinez delivering. Gar Garcia bounces at foul. First base side to Rick Dempsey. What the fans are booing about, remember back on October 11th of last fall in the American League Championship Series when it was Pedro and Kareem Garcia that kind of ignited quite a Donnybrook here at uh, Fenway Park. Garcia hit by a pitch. And the delivery to the left-handed batter swing and a miss. Fans getting great joy in that swing and a miss by Garcia. And that thing ultimately ended with Pedro Martinez and the 70 plus Don Zimmer going at it. Zimmer being thrown to the turf here at Fenway Park. The two strike delivery inside fastball. And then later in that ball game, if you remember, there was a, a, a fracas out in the bullpen area where. Kareem Garcia and uh, Jeff Nelson got involved and in strike three to Kareem Garcia and listen to the fans here at Fenway. They take great joy in that strike out of Kareem Garcia. Let's just listen in. And then of course they had that fracas out in the bullpen where Nelson the kid that grew up in uh, Catonsville he got involved with that member of the grounds crew. And they still have not resolved that. There is a scheduled hearing, assault charges trial on October 26th of this upcoming fall. So that's the memory for Kareem Garcia here. He is the fourth strikeout of an Oriole first out, and Larry Bigby takes the breaking ball down and in ball one. Well, Garcia got rung up on a borderline call. What I recall about that incident was the press conference, I think a couple of days later, with Pedro Martinez. Pitch to Big B, another breaking ball for a strike. Remember they asked Pedro about Kareem Garcia, and Pedro said something like, Who the heck is that guy? Yeah, right. Who is he to tell me how to pitch? Who is he to comment on the way I pitch? He's a nobody, that guy. 1 1 delivery and uh, pulled to the first base side. Down on a knee is Millar. He flips to Pedro, covering for the second out of the inning. Well, that was the talk of the ALCS for sure, and everyone just kind of shook their heads. When Pedro went after Don Zimmer, who was then the bench coach of the Yankees, and threw him to the down, to the ground. You know, I, I have to correct you because I think initially Don Zimmer went after Pedro. Well, that's true. I, yeah, hey. <laughs> and then Zimmer said, you know, it's a little, a little <laughs> stupid there. What a dumb thing that I did, huh? Yeah. But uh, that's the memory of that uh, particular incident. And now Pedro has two outs. And at the plate is Luis Matos. And Luis, yesterday, he was the only Oriole who had an at bat in that ball game that did not have a hit. As the Orioles pounded Kansas City yesterday, 16 hits, 11, 11 extra base hits, including five home runs. Right handed batter in the delivery to Matos, taken for a strike on the outside portion. Luis Matos just four for his last 49, hitting 226. Six home runs, 28 runs driven in. The Orioles have two out here. In the bottom of the third scoreless ball game, the Martinez kick and the pitch outside. The Red Sox looking for Pedro to go very deep in this ball game because their bullpen had been taxed on that West Coast trip. Yesterday, they went through the guys in the bullpen one right after another. Keith Folk having worked uh, long innings in both ball games in Seattle, their closer. The 2 1 pitch bounced foul, pulled third base side beyond the third base coach's box, and a gentleman reaching over to pick up that. 
foul ball didn't come up with a foul ball and also lost his cold drink as he flipped it out onto the to the uh, warning track in front of the stands and then the boy boy picks up the ball and hands it to a youngster <laughs> <laughs> uh, two balls two strikes two out the Martinez kick and the delivery and strike three called fifth strikeout second of the inning and Luis Matos really looks uh, Kind of lost and very upset with home plate umpire Jeff Kellogg. That's the inning for the Orioles. We played two and a half in Boston scoreless. Scoreless ball game after two and a half. Johnny Damon will get his second at bat of the ball game. He walked his first trip against the left-hander Eric Bedard. The lefty swinging Damon four for his last 25. Open stands. Bedard rocks, fires, and Damon looks at a pitch low. One ball, no strikes. In the first inning. Damon reached for the walk. Bellhorn infield hit. David Ortiz struck out swinging. And then on a strike three to Manny Ramirez, a double steal. Setting up runners at second and third. Here's a strike to Damon. And then Jason Veritek looped one towards center field in a spectacular catch by the Orioles shortstop Miguel Tejada saved a couple of runs. A 1 1 delivery on the way to Damon, way outside. And it's a two ball, one strike count. Damon has done well against left handed uh, pitching this year. A 310 hitter overall, hitting 307 against Southpaws. The pitch on the way to Damon, and he slashes a foul back and out of play. Two balls, two strikes. Johnny Damon, not a power guy, but he does have a dozen home runs this year. 48 driven in. And on base percentage, close to 400 at 392. And that's what he's in that top spot to do is get on base for the big boys who follow. The Bedard delivery to Damon hit towards shortstop. A big hop played by Miguel Tejada. Throw to first and one gone. One out in the bottom of the third. More comfort, fresh air. Still less than any fare around. That's Airtran Airways. All new Boeing 717s with 100% fresh air. Book at Airtran.com. Go. There's nothing stopping you. Mark Bellhorn playing shortstop tonight. That little tapper third base side for an infield hit. His first at bat. Bellhorn, a switch hitter, bats on the right side against Bedard. Pitch on the way to Bellhorn is a strike on the outer portion of the plate, 0 1. Bellhorn, as a right handed batter, hitting over 300, hitting in the mid 200s from the other side of the plate. 11 home runs, he's driven in 51. And Bellhorn watches this one outside and high. One ball and one strike to Mark. Lead leader in strikeouts with 103 strikeouts for Mark Bellhorn. He'll be followed by David Ortiz. The delivery to Bellhorn, a swing and a miss at the fastball, one and two. Bellhorn is now six for his last 21 uh, since the All Star break. The Boston Red Sox, three wins and three losses. Split four in Anaheim and split two in Seattle. One ball, two strike pitch on the way from Eric Bedard. The southpaw's pitch, and Bellhorn just watches it outside. That pitch was awfully close, but the call went Bellhorn's way. Two balls, two strikes. Eric Bedard in his first ever career start against the Boston Red Sox in the regular season. 2 2 pitch, ball three, down and in. It pitched in spring training at Fort Lauderdale and just had a lights out game against Boston. In fact, after the game, talking to several Boston players, they were wondering who this kid was who looked so polished and had such a good assortment of devastating pitches that night at Fort Lauderdale Stadium. 3 2 delivery. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Make it 104 strikeouts now for Mark Bellhorn. And for Eric Bedard, his third strikeout tonight. They got him on a breaking ball on three and two, and a ball that looked high hung up there pretty good, but. Bellhorn just couldn't find it. You know, our job is to report the game as we see it. And from what I see anyway so far tonight, Pedro Martinez has gotten the corners and Bedard hasn't. It's as simple as that. Yeah, it, it sometimes goes that the, the guy who's the veteran will get the benefit of the doubt and the youngster, well, he's got to work. And now here's David Ortiz. And Ortiz, who came up with runners at first and second, his first at bat, nobody down, struck out swinging. And Ortiz was the very first strikeout of the ball game for Eric Bedard. Takes ball one outside. Big left handed batter. DHing for Terry Francona. And Ortiz watches this one high. Two balls, no strike. 
Over his last 20 at bats, he has six hits, two of the six home runs. He's driven in nine of his 87 runs over his last 20 trips to the plate. Ortiz straightaway stance, deep in the box, bending at the knees, and a bent over the plate at the waist. And the delivery is ball three. Ortiz dropped the bat before the pitch was even delivered to watch that one out of the strike zone. Three balls, no strikes. Manny Ramirez on deck. Two out, bottom of the third, scoreless. First game of three over two days for the Red Sox and the Orioles. The 3 0 pitch, and Ortiz holds the, holds the bat on the shoulder as that went right down the middle for a strike. Three balls and one strike. Interesting. He got a fastball right down the middle on 3 0, and Ortiz never even thought about swinging. He just left that uh, two tone bat resting on his shoulder. So 3 and 1 to Ortiz. Still a pretty good hitter's count. Bedard to the plate, and Ortiz. Takes ball four outside. Third walk, a walk in each inning so far tonight for Bedard. Now that's a good example there. That's a pitch that Martinez has been getting. It looked like a pretty good pitch. A borderline call, but it could have gone either way. Now Jeff Kellogg, as you mentioned, has been given Martinez the corners and Bedard not has had the corners. Here's Manny Ramirez. Ramirez. Fell behind 0-2 in his first at bat, then worked the count full and struck out swinging for the second out of the inning. But a double steal set uh, runners at second and third for the Boston Red Sox. Now, with the man at first base and two down, Manny Ramirez comes to the plate, and Manny takes the first pitch, a breaking ball for a strike. And in that first at bat, early in the at bat, we saw a lot of off-speed pitches to Manny Ramirez. Ramirez hits in the number four hole. 78 runs driven in, leads the league with 27 home runs. Very good 340 batting mark among the leaders. Runner at first base, Ortiz, not a lot of speed. Pitch on the way to Ramirez, fastball up. He went ball, one strike. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Orioles radio network. Manny Ramirez at the plate for the Boston Red Sox scoreless ball game bottom of the third David Ortiz at first base Bedard ready to deal one and one to Manny fastball high and away two balls and one strike to the right handed batting left fielder Eric Bedard young left hander three wins four losses this is his 17th game and his 17th start works from the third base side of the slab as he reaches the sign from Javi Lopez. Catcher flashes the sign now Bedard ready to deal two balls one strike to Manny Ramirez pitch on the way and Ramirez is fisted a pop up to the right of the pitcher's mound and Bedard will handle it for the out the final out and Ortiz stranded at first base that's it we played three at Fenway Orioles nothing Red Sox nothing scoreless ball game after three innings here at Fenway Park in Boston the Red Sox have the only hit of the game it was an infield hit as Pedro Martinez and Eric Bedard have pitched well in this ball game. Brian Roberts the first batter in the ballgame struck out swinging one of five strikeouts recorded by Pedro Martinez left handed batter against Pedro on the first pitch right there for a strike 0 and 1 to Brian Brian uh, in his career one for seven against Pedro Martinez but that one hit it went the distance a home run the one strike delivery hit high and foul down the left side Brian Roberts down in the count no balls two strikes. Well, last year, Pedro Martinez was one and one against the Orioles. And, uh, well, he was tagged here last year by the Orioles in one ball game. And uh, strike three called. Brian Roberts watches a fastball on the outer portion of the plate. So Roberts is the sixth strikeout tonight for Pedro Martinez as he watched that one hit on the outside portion. In the Red Sox home opener on April 12th, the Orioles had a good time against Pedro. They scored 10 runs on nine hits. He walked four batters in four and a third innings, and the Orioles beat the Red Sox that night 13 to 6. That was a career high given up by Pedro in a ball game, 10 runs. Here's David Newhan with a foul at the plate. Newhan grounded out to the shortstop Mark Bellhorn, his first ever look at Pedro Martinez. David Newhand with a three game hit streak. He's hit in 27 of his 29 Oriole games. Left handed batter hitting 409. The Martinez delivery down and in. 
One ball and one strike. Melvin Mora to follow. On the SK out of town scoreboard. Down the road at Yankee Stadium. Yankees with five runs in the bottom of the second. They lead Toronto 5 0. Swing and a miss. New hand. With a one ball, two strike count. Martinez tonight has been using an array of off speed breaking balls to get Oriole hitters. Has not been using his fastball very often. Maybe he'll save that for the middle innings. Here's the one two pitch to New Hand. It's a broken bat down toward third base. Euclid with a bare handed pickup, the off balance throw, and there's no way they're going to get New Hand an infield hit. Well, that ball broke the bat. It went queuing down toward the bag at third base. Euclid came in. He knew he couldn't glove it and then pick it. He went barehanded, and by the time he threw to first base, Newhan, who can get down that line, was crossed the bag, and uh, he has a, a hit for the Orioles, their first hit of the night. It had been ten up, ten down for the Orioles against Pedro Martinez. So the infield hit, and here's Melvin Mora. He watched strike three, his first trip. Mora now two for 19 against Pedro. New hand with his lead at first base. One out. Scoreless ball game. Martinez holds the set. Kicks and a pitch out called and not going was New hand. New hand has attempted two steals and not been caught. Into the dugout looks Jason Veritek to see what the skipper wants to do with a one ball no strike count. And of course Rick Dempsey the first base coach and of course third base coach Tom Treblehorn. Looking at the skipper Lee Mazzilli in the third base dugout to see what the Orioles want to do here. New hand with his lead at first. Right handed batter at the plate. More of the pitch on the way to Melvin. Way outside. 1 0. Oh. I think the way things are going for David Newhand, I think maybe he ought to buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> yeah. When he hits line drives, they're all base hits. And then when he hits the ball gently and breaks a bat, that turns into a base hit. Yeah, it's been nice being in the big leagues again for David Newhand. Oh, Things boy, are going well. He's been fun to watch. So two balls no strikes to Melvin Mora scoreless ball game top of the fourth. And the pitch on the way to Melvin here's a slow breaking ball for a strike. Two and one to Mora Mora with a three game hit streak since. He's been playing again. Melvin Mora in his first game back in Tampa Bay a home run. Melvin Mora in yesterday's ball game went one for four the first game. In Kansas City went one for five more with the average at three forty two that's still second best in the American League behind Pudge Rodriguez of Detroit. New hand at first two one count to Mora one out the pitch to Melvin is outside ball three. Normally this might be a pretty good running count Fred but with Pedro Martinez that's tough to do with a count three and one because he's liable to throw you a change up or a breaking ball or something weird that the hitter can't find and you might run into an out. But normally this would be a pretty good running situation. And we'll see what Lee Mazzilli has up his sleeve here with New Hand taking his lead at first, being held by Millar. A 3 1 count to Melvin Mora. One out. The Martinez set and a quick throw to first, and they were suspicious that maybe New Hand would be off towards second base. So a bullet fired over to first base by Pedro Martinez. He did. He fired a real fastball over there. Man. I think it was 93. <laughs> fastest pitch of the night. So Martinez behind three and one as Mora awaits the pitch. Pedro holds. Newhand does not run a high fly ball deep to left field. The Orioles will have a ball go off the green monster at third base as Newhand into second base goes Melvin Mora. I thought that ball was going to be up in the monster seats when it left the bat. But it dipped and maybe hit five feet below the top part of the green monster. The Orioles with runners at second and third and one down for Miguel Tejada. Well, that's a, a good example of Fenway Park. In a lot of ballparks, that is a home run. But at Fenway Park, because of that green monster, it's an extra base hit. And that's the 20th double of the year for Melvin Mora. So the Orioles now have a golden opportunity. Runners at second and third one out and Miguel Tejada coming to the plate Tejada hit a fly ball to shallow center his first look at Pedro Martinez in his career Miguel six for twenty seven against Pedro with a home run. Martinez leans in gets the side from Veritek new hand at third Mora at second. 
The delivery on the way to Tejada. Fastball misses outside. One ball and no strikes. Tejada, of course, leads the ball club with his 80 runs driven in. And uh, among the leaders in the American League in that department. Miguel Tejada. Just seven RBI behind uh, the American League leader, David Ortiz of the Red Sox. Pitch on the way to Miguel. Fly ball, center field. This will get one run in. It's Johnny Damon. Misplays the ball. It gets beyond Damon. Goes all the way to the wall. Here comes Newhand to give the Orioles a 1-0 lead. More around third. He comes in to score. The throw to third base. Sliding with a triple. Miguel Tejada, 2-0 Orioles. Johnny Damon looked like he was going to make an easy catch of that ball. And then all of a sudden, it got beyond him as he went diving to his right side. The ball underneath and beyond all the way to the wall to the right of the 379 sign. And the Orioles have taken a 2-0 lead. Miguel Tejada with RBIs 81 and 82. Uh, Tejada hit that ball so hard it had to be knuckling out there. And Johnny Damon just never got a good read on that ball. But I think you're right. Normally that ball's got to be caught. But that ball was really smoked. And Tejada has been given a triple and a couple of RBIs. It's his second triple of the season. We mentioned now 82 runs driven in for Miguel Tejada. And here's Rafi with Tejada at third and one down. Orioles two. Red Sox nothing. And a fly ball toward right center field. It's dropping, dropping, dropping. And Kapler makes a diving, rolling grab. Tagging from third, coming to the plate is Tejada. Three nothing Orioles. As Kapler made a sensational catch, he may be hurt. Got in right field. Robbing extra bases of Rafael Palmero. It'll be a sack fly for Rafi. He picks up his 55th RBI, but it's the second out of the inning. And Pedro Martinez stands on the hill, points out to Kapler, says sensational grab. And uh, the Orioles have two down, but three runs in. Well, on the ball that Tejada hit, Johnny Damon giveth. And on the ball Palmero hit, Kapler taketh away. And we have one misplay and one great play back this, to back. This is a game of biblical proportions. And Javi Lopez, it's a hard ground ball to Euclid at third. The toss to first, that's the inning. But the Orioles come up with three runs. A Miguel Tejada triple to drive in two. A Rafael Palmero sack fly to bring in one. We go to the bottom of the fourth. It's the Orioles three, the Red Sox nothing. Fred Banford, Joe Angel, and Johnny Goldsmith at Fenway Park. Orioles have grabbed a 3-0 lead over the Boston Red Sox. Newhand with a, a single, an infield hit. Melvin Mora, a double off the green monster, a triple by Tejada to bring them in. And Rafael Palmero, the sack fly. 3-0 Orioles, bottom of the fourth. Bedard delivers to Veritek, and the fastball is low. 1-0 to the Red Sox catcher, who was robbed of a possible two-run single his first trip on a spectacular catch out in shallow center field by Oriole shortstop Miguel Tejada. Swing and a miss by Veritek, one and one. Veritek hitting 312 against left-handed pitching. On the year, 277, 11 home runs and 39 driven in for the switch hitting catcher. The southpaw Bedard and Veritek swings and misses again. One ball and two strikes to Jason Veritek. Now five for his last 16. Stands deep in the box, straight away stance as a right handed batter, waggles the bat and awaits the one ball, two strike offering. Pitch on the way and it's pulled foul, bouncing on the ground into the Orioles' dugout. Well, it's almost time for one of the most popular giveaways of the year. That'll be Floppy Hat Night presented by Miller Light. It comes this Friday against the Minnesota Twins. And the first 25,000 fans, 21 and over, will receive a Miller Light floppy hat. The 1 2 pitch on the way again to Veritek. Tapped foul at the plate. The 2004 version of this uh, hat that fans want to get every year, it's one of the most popular giveaways, is in orange and black camouflage. Tickets still remain, but they're going fast. Call the Orioles at 888 bird or log on to theorioles.com. One ball, two strikes to the leadoff man, Veritek, here in the bottom of the fourth. Orioles scoring three in the top of the inning. Lead at 3 nothing. and Veritek swings late and misses. Strike three. He's the first out in the bottom of the fourth. Four strikeouts now for Eric Bedard as he fired the fastball by him. Kevin Euclid will come up now. He popped out along the first base foul line to the second baseman, Brian Roberts. His first plate appearance. 
Nicholas with his big league average at 285. He's hit three home runs, 19 driven in. The right handed batting third baseman watches the first one low. On the SK, out of town scoreboard at Yankee Stadium, they played two and a half. Yankees lead Toronto by three, five to two. The Bedard delivery to Euclid. A line drive to left field. Bigby comes in and makes the grab face high as he came in and to his right. Hit hard, but Bigby had the good jump and was there to make the grab. Two down here in the bottom of the fourth. Now Bedard wants to keep this Boston ball club off the scoreboard here in the bottom of the fourth after his team gave him the three nothing lead in the top of the inning. And he's got two out in the bottom of the fourth. Kevin Millar is up right handed batter watches the first pitch right down the middle for a strike a fastball 91 miles an hour from Bedard. Kevin Millar really struggling. He's one for his last 15 just two for his last 22 hitting 269 outside and high one ball and one strike Millar has not homered since June 18th. Last year of course Kevin Millar a big force for the Boston Red Sox. The right handed batter awaits the one one pitch lined in the center field of a hit. So Millar is on with two down. As Bill Miller will step in last year. Kevin Millar drove in 96 runs for the Boston Red Sox hit 25 home runs and he was big uh, part of that uh, Boston ball club. They were looking forward to big things from him this year but he has not yet really been delivering this year Millar with just 25 RBI and we're already in the second half of the season. Bill Miller a fly ball to center field his first trip and he hits a ground ball fair down the third baseline kicks off that low railing down the left field side right to Larry Bigby who hustled in and the left fielder tosses toward the infield and having to stop at second base Kevin Millar so Bill Miller on with back to back singles. Orioles get a break any other ballpark in baseball that's at least a double and maybe a run. But nope. the ball caromed off the lower deck and ricocheted out toward Bigby who played it very nicely and he held him to a single. Melvin Mora a very upset with the call of third base umpire Dan Ayasana. He felt that ball was foul as it went by and Mora was in the face of Dan Ayasana after the play had uh, concluded and immediately Miguel Tejada came over and separated Melvin Mora from the third base umpire. Very wise move. You don't want to lose Mora in this ball game. He came over put his arm around his shoulder took him away and Lee Mazzilli came out of the third base side dugout to play a state his case. But now that's all over and uh, I think cooler heads are prevailing as Tejada went hey Melvin let it go. We don't want to lose you. I think the umpire made a good call. I mean, that ball bounced a couple of times before it got to the bag and it bounced over the left hand corner of the bag. That was a fair ball. So runners at first and second but two down and here's Gabe Kapler a broken bat pop up foul ground third base side running back and he watches it go out of play as third baseman Melvin Mora here at Fenway Park a very intimate ballpark to say the least down the left field foul line after you have some well negligible room between the foul line and the dugouts then it really gets small as you go into the left field area as the box seats kind of jut out and give you a couple of feet maybe four feet from the foul line to the stands and that ball was maybe one row away from being in the playing surface but it was a foul ball into the stands and Melvin Moore ran out of room and that's why the ball hit by Mil Bill Miller was only a single and not extra bases. And so Kapler who broke his bat has to go back to get a new piece of lumber. Dave Kapler popped out in foul ground first base side his first trip Kapler batting in the ninth spot. Millar at second Miller at first two down Bedard with one strike on Kapler pitch on the way to the right handed batter high one ball one strike tried many times on a ball hit like the one Bill Miller hit the shortstop has to hustle he's got to get back there and he has to play the carom. Orioles lead at three nothing three runs in the top of the fourth inning we're in the bottom of the fourth now two out for Boston a couple of two out singles runners at first and second the pitch to Kapler foul Gabe Kapler with a one ball two strike count as that ball bounces into the stands to the third base side Gabe Kapler has done a nice job in right field of course he made that rolling catch on the fly ball off the bat of Rafael Palmero. It was a sacrifice fly but it could have been extra bases for Raffi. Kapler 
five for his last 20 with a couple of home runs over that stretch. One and two to the right handed batting outfit of the pitch to Kapler pulled foul on the ground and this is well wide of third base. There'll be no argument from Melvin Mora this time. And the call by the umpire immediately foul ball. And that ball caroms off that box seat railing we talked about out into shallow left field picked up by the ball boy. And Melvin said good call. Up. <laughs> yeah. Nice going up. Trying to make up a little bit. <laughs> So Kapler again awaiting the one ball two strike pitch with two out two on. The left handed Bedard sets at the letters looks back at the runner at second delivers to Kapler and a high fly ball well hit the left field and we are going to be tied a three run home run for Gabe Kapler ties it here in the bottom of the fourth inning it all started with two outs. Kapler goes up into the green monster seats with two mates aboard his fourth home run of the year and we are tied at three. Fred he got a change up and Kapler the way he swung at it. I have to believe that he was looking for a change up because he waited on it the ball was up and he wailed on it. And those fans up there in those seats the green monster seats have a souvenir and a happy one if you're a Red Sox fan as Gabe Kapler. Drives in runs 14 and 15 with his fourth home run and this has been a very eventful fourth inning Orioles scored three in the top of the inning now Boston comes back with three Johnny Damon swings through a fastball after taking a ball high one ball one strike to Johnny and maybe the change up not a bad decision but the location was terrible. Damon has been on base once via the walk also grounded out to short. The darts delivery to Damon fly ball well hit the left center field Matos racing over to the base of the wall he reaches up makes the grab slams into the National League scoreboard may have twisted his ankle as he is hopping on one foot coming back toward the Oriole dugout outstanding catch by Matos to take at least a double away from Johnny Damon Matos still hobbling as he heads toward the Oriole dugout. Richie Bansell's running out to make sure he's okay. That's the inning. A three run home run by Kapler ties. We go to the top of the fifth, 3 3 Orioles and the Red Sox. Well, we've had a very eventful fourth inning. Each team scoring three runs. We head to the fifth, Orioles three, Red Sox three. Once again, here's Joe Angel. All right, Fred, for the second time tonight, uh, tonight uh, Kareem Garcia. What'd I say? I said for the second time tonight, Kareem Garcia will face Pedro Martinez. Or at least that's what I tried to say. <laughs> Bottom of the order here, Garcia digs in and Martinez delivers. Change up, and he misses outside for a ball. His first time up tonight, Garcia was called out on strikes. On a borderline call that Garcia wasn't very happy about. Well, he's 0 for 1, and Martinez ready, delivers again. Change up, popped up, infield, left side. Euclid making his way in toward the plate, and on the infield grass, he makes the catch. One away now Bigby will come up to hit. And the fans here at Fenway Park still reacting to what happened last year in the postseason between the Yankees and the Red Sox when Kareem Garcia was a member of that Yankee ball club and Pedro Martinez threw at him. Now the pitch to Bigby takes a fastball for a call strike. After that Manny Ramirez was thrown at. As the Yankees retaliated, here's the pitch. Big B takes it a little bit too low. Ultimately, Don Zimmer was the guy that went down. <laughs> Remember when he went after Pedro Martinez, and Pedro, like a bullfighter, put him right on the ground. He olayed him. A little breaking ball, a call strike to Big B. One and two now to the Orioles center fielder. Tied up here, one down, bases empty in the top of the fifth inning. Martinez in this game has had six strikeouts. Here comes a pitch and in the dirt on a changeup that Bigby was tempted on but would not swing. So they can't two and two now. Bigby retired on a ground out his first time up. Martinez peers in says yes. The right hander into his motion and delivers a breaking ball. Bigby lays off inside. So they can't three and two. Now. Larry yesterday big fly Bigby at nine home run. In the game at Kansas City, a two run homer. Nine home runs with 39 RBIs now. 
As he stands in, right hander against left hander. Pedro ready and delivers. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. He got him with a fastball, a two seamer, a sinking fastball. And Pedro Martinez with Ponchado numero siete. Some of the Dominican fans here at Fenway Park have a sign out there that says Los Ponchados de Pedro. Does that mean strikeout? The strikeouts of Pedro? Ponchado means strikeout. And Pedro means Pedro in any language. And now the pitch to Matos is just outside a fastball. So he does have seven Ponchados tonight. Now here's the 1 0 delivery. Fastball. Where'd that miss? That time Pedro did not get the corner. That's good to see that Matos is taking the at bat after banging his body into that scoreboard and making that great catch to rob Johnny Damon. Boy, that was a great catch. Here's the pitch. Will change up. Little chopper hit back to Martinez. He has it off the mound. And then I'm to Millard to get the out. So Martinez, after giving up three runs on three hits in the fourth inning, comes right back and gets him one, two, three in the fifth. And now we go to the bottom half. Tied up at three and three. Fans of the fifth inning of Orioles baseball at Fenway Park tonight brought to you by IWIF. More Maryland employers choose IWIF than any other workers' compensation insurer. Safety saves with IWIF. Here's Mark Melhorn to lead off against Eric Bedard in the bottom of the fifth inning. Takes a fastball for a call strike. Melhorn and the David Ortiz and then Manny Ramirez in a tie ball game here. And now Bedard delivers again. Bellhorn on a breaking ball. Bounces one foul at that left side. Well, the count nothing and two now to Bellhorn, who in this game has gone one for two, an infield single, and a strikeout here tonight. Now Bedard really has made one bad pitch in this game, a hanging changeup that Kampler took out for a three-run game-tying home run. Here's a pitch fastball inside to Bellhorn. One and two now to Mark Bellhorn. On the SK scoreboard, the Yankees are having a delightful time against the Toronto Blue Jays right now. Here's the one-two to Bellhorn. Fastball off the outside edge. And the count two and two. Yankees lead Toronto nine to two in the fourth inning. And in that game, Gary Sheffield, with that lame shoulder of his, hit another home run. He's got 19 now. How many would Sheffield have if he had a healthy shoulder? There's a swing and a miss, and Bellhorn goes down on strikes for the second time tonight. Bedard now with five strikeouts in this game. Bedard, who has been averaging this year almost eight strikeouts every nine innings. And if he had enough innings to qualify, Bedard would be among the league leaders in strikeouts. Now here's David Ortiz. Bedard ready and delivers. A little bit too low for a ball. Yeah, Gary Sheffield very quietly. Fred having an outstanding season for the Yankees. I mean, this guy's been hurt the entire, all the way from spring training. And look what he's done. 19 bombs now. Here's the 1 0 delivery. Ortiz slices one to our left. Big beyond the run, racing over. Makes the catch about chest high on the run, heading for the corner. We're talking about Sheffield in the New York papers this morning. The Yankees were contemplating the fact he might have to go on the disabled list once again. Remember when he was in Baltimore, he was having problems with that shoulder. He had the shot in there. Boy, that guy, he plays through pain. And one of the things when the Yankees signed him, people said, you know, he's not that good a guy in the clubhouse. Well, they called Bobby Cox down in Atlanta. And Cox said, hey, there's a guy that will play through injury. He'll play hurt. And he'll be a much better presence than you think, and he certainly has been for the Yankees. Yeah, now here's Manny Ramirez. Well, I watched uh, Gary Sheffield play a lot of baseball with the Florida Marlins. Here's a pitch, and Ramirez gets under it, fouled it back out of play. And Gary Sheffield, I think, might be certainly one of the most intelligent hitters that I've ever seen in baseball. Physically very strong, very intelligent, tremendous bat speed, and he does play hurt. And nobody wants to win more than Gary Sheffield. So uh, to me, he's a great guy to have in a ball club. 
There's the 0 1 delivery. Ramirez swing and a fastball, and he goes right through it. And the count nothing in two now to Manny Ramirez. I think it was in spring training he hurt his hand, and he didn't. He got very upset when the Yankees said that he hurt his hand. He said, "Look, I'm going to be playing, and that will give a pitcher an opportunity to think that I have a weakness there, and they will try to exploit that. I don't want anybody to know about injuries that I might have." have to keep that quiet, understandably. Manny Ramirez and a hole at nothing in two. Two gone, no one on. Tie ball game in the fifth. Here's the pitch. Pass ball, swing and a miss. Struck came out. He went right to the heat. Fastball that time at about 88 miles an hour. I mean, not all that quick, but it jumped on Ramirez and he went right through it. So Bedard gets him one, two, three with a couple of strikeouts. He's got six in the game. And at the end of five, we're tied at three and three. Here we're tied. Head to the sixth. And let's get right back to Fred Manfred. Thanks a lot, Joe. And it's been a tough night for Brian Roberts against Pedro Martinez. Two ups and two strikeouts. One swinging, one watching. And the first delivery is outside to Brian. Kevin Euclid, the third baseman, in well on the grass in respect to the speed of Brian Roberts. Switch hitter, and the pitch to Brian is a breaking ball that finds the plate. One ball and one strike to the Orioles' second baseman. Roberts, Newhan, and Mora, the top third in the Orioles' order. Brian lines it and over the head of the leaping second baseman Bill Miller into right field. So Brian Roberts gets on for the first time tonight. And the Orioles get their leadoff man on here in the sixth inning. 3-3 ball game. Each team scoring three runs in the fourth. The Orioles with a broken bat single by Newhan, a double by Mora, and then a triple to bring both in. And uh, Melvin... Uh, Scoring, new hand scoring, and then Miguel Tejada came in on a sacrifice fly off the bat of Palmero. Now the Orioles have something going here in the top of the sixth inning with Roberts at first and new hand at the plate. David, the DH once again for Lee Mazzilli. Again in at third base is the third baseman, Euclid. This time they feel that the Orioles will try to get Roberts into scoring position. And David Newhan, as an Oriole, has not yet put down a sacrifice bunt. Left-handed batter with a slightly open stance. Holding with the runner right now is Millar at first. That runner with speed, Brian Roberts. And there's the pitch, and it's a swing and a line drive looping into right center field. A base hit. Johnny Damon will come up with the ball, but moving to third base, Brian Roberts. So the second hit of the night for David Newhan, who just keeps on hitting. Newhan, two for three, and runners at first and third for Melvin Mora. You know, Fred, it's almost as if David Newhan, I mean, he's now 30 years of age. In high school, he was overlooked. In college, he was overlooked. As a professional, he's been overlooked. He's been taken for granted, never given a chance. Now he's getting that chance. And it's as though Newhan is saying to himself, I'm not going to give anybody any excuse to get me out of there. Time to grab the ring and go. And now here's Melvin Mora. He has... Newhand at first, plenty of speed. Brian Roberts at third. No one down for the Orioles here in the sixth. The pitch to Melvin, bounced foul, third base side. And Tom Treblehorn, Oriole third base coach, appeared at first like he was going to handle it, and then he backed away and let it bounce by. That's why they call him the professor. Very intelligent. He knows when to back away. Yeah, and he did that time. Right now he's talking with Brian Roberts, who has his lead at third base. And Melvin Mora tonight, a called strike three and a double off the green monster. When it left the bat, I thought it was going to be a two-run home run. Instead, Melvin had his 20th double of the year. 3-3 ball game. The Martinez pitch to Mora way outside, but Melvin goes after that breaking ball. A swing and a miss, strike two. Anxious was Melvin Mora that time. And Pedro Martinez threw one that looked like about three feet off the plate, and Melvin went after it. So two strikes to Mora. It's a hotter to follow. Orioles trying to grab the lead here in the top of the sixth. Orioles have had five hits against Pedro. Two of them coming here in the sixth. Martinez to the plate two strikes and Mora does not chase a pitch out of the strike zone and high. One and two now to the Oriole third baseman. Melvin now with a four game hit streak. Mora continues to show the way to the Orioles with that uh, batting average at 344 second best in the American League new hand from first Roberts from third pitch to Mora one and two fastball high again two balls two strikes to the Orioles third baseman 
Orioles this year have had success against this Boston club in six games. The Orioles have picked up four victories. They have won both games played here at Fenway Park. So the Orioles have given the Red Sox a tussle. And they have a tie ball game right now, 3 3, trying to take the lead in the top of the sixth. Runners hit first and third. Martinez ready to deal two and two to Melvin Mora. Holds the set, still holds, still holds, still holds. Now delivers to Melvin, and it's slammed on a line foul into the stands left side. I thought Pedro might go back to a breaking ball there on two and two after a couple of fastballs. He did go back to the breaking ball, but he missed his spot. The catch of air attack set up way outside, and Pedro delivered that breaking ball inside, and I think he was lucky that Mora didn't do something with that pitch. So Melvin again with a two ball two strike count new hand walking his lead at first base standing several feet off the bag at third is Brian Roberts here's the two two pitch down and away and Melvin Morris showed uh, restraint that time he was ready to go after a breaking ball in the dirt in the first base side batter's box but has worked the count full you're right that's the same breaking ball he chased earlier on the at bat. So now three and two to Melvin Mora Mora in his career. Three for 20 against Pedro Martinez. He never hit a home run against Pedro. The Orioles with runners at the corners. Nobody down. 3-3 three, three ball game. Martinez to the plate. Three and two to Mora. And Mora watches ball four. Bases loaded for Miguel Tejada. Newhand moves to second, staying at third, Brian Roberts. And the walk sends Melvin Mora to first base. That's the first free pass issued by. Pedro Martinez tonight. Oh boy, Fred, that's a good at bat because he got in a hole early. He saw three fastballs on the entire at bat, and Mora didn't swing at any of them. And now Miguel Tejada, who sent a line drive to center field that was misplayed by Johnny Damon into a two run triple. Now Tejada comes up with the bases loaded. Uh, the Martinez pitch to Miguel fouled back and out of play. Tejada also with an outstanding defensive play in the very first inning. With runners at second and third and two out, Jason Veritek was making a bid for a looping single into center field. Tejada sprinted out, went into a dive, and made the grab to bring an end to the inning and keep that ball game scoreless. Now he has a chance to give the Orioles the lead in a 3-3 ball game. Pitch on the way to Tejada. A foul ball off his foot rolling down the third base side, and Brian Roberts will pick it up on the grass a couple of feet off the bag at third and flip it into the stand. So two strikes. To Tejada. Tejada still walking off the pain, and the home plate umpire, Jeff Kellogg, allowing him to do so, calls for a new batch of baseballs. Miguel has not yet picked up the bat. The bat boy holding that bat for Miguel, and catcher Jason Veritek out to talk to Pedro Martinez. And Tejada still feeling the pain of that foot as he's still walking around. Right now, his foot feels like he just stuck it into a hornet's nest. <laughs> <laughs> and they're still stinging. Without a shoe. Miguel Tejada this year with the bases loaded. Just one for 12. A runner at every base for the Birds. Nobody down. The two strike delivery to Tejada outside. One ball and two strikes. Moray is at first base. Newhan at second. Roberts at third. So there's plenty of speed on the bases for the Orioles. And Miguel Tejada has already picked up a couple of RBI tonight for 82 on the year. The one two pitch Pedro Martinez ready to deal with the bases loaded. The delivery on the way to Miguel Tejada breaking ball up and in Tejada rocked back from the plate to even the count of 2 2. And the Orioles with a golden opportunity here against Martinez. He has not retired a batter. They have the bases loaded in this 3 3 ball game and. Their top RBI producer at the plate in Miguel Tejada. The two ball, two strike delivery on the way from Pedro Martinez to Miguel. Pitch on the way, and it's a line drive left field, base hit. Roberts will score. New hand streaks around third. He'll come in to score. Four to two Orioles. Miguel Tejada with a four RBI night. And the Orioles take the four to four three lead here against the Boston Red Sox. I should say a five three lead against the Boston Red Sox here in the top of the sixth. A bases loaded single to left field by Miguel Tejada as he scores Roberts from third, Newhan from second. Mora stays at second base and still no one down. Had a pretty good job by Manny Ramirez out there to hold Melvin Mora to second base. And the ball hit to the corner. And a great job of hitting by Tejada on a breaking ball on two and two. 
He went down to get it. And now here's Rafi and he fouls it out of play left side. So Miguel Tejada with four RBI tonight. And the Orioles have that 5 3 lead against Pedro Martinez, bidding for more with nobody out in the top of the six. And that was not a bad breaking ball. In fact, Tejada went down to get it. It was almost in the dirt. And he picked it up. Palmero with a sack fly to drive in his 55th run, his last at bat. And the pitch on the way to Rafi, down and in with a breaking ball. One ball and one strike. Looking at the numbers for Palmero against Pedro Martinez, and very surprised to see that Rafi's never gone deep against Pedro Martinez. Activity starting in the bullpen for the Red Sox, and now Rafael pulls it foul, first base side. One ball, two strikes. Well, Palmero has had 23 career home runs against the Boston Red Sox. The Orioles with two runs in. Five to three, they lead it. Pedro Martinez working to Rafael Palmero. Still no one down for the Orioles. Miguel Tejada at first, Melvin Mora at second. The delivery from Pedro to Rafi misses inside. And now all of a sudden, Jeff Kellogg, who was given corners and very questionable pitches early to Pedro Martinez, not doing so. Yeah, he's getting tougher now, isn't he? Martinez with a 2 2 count to Rafael. Looks back at Mora at second. Comes to the plate to Rafi, and it's pulled. First base side, picked up by Millar. He goes to second for one, and that's all they're going to get. As uh, the throw back to first base by Bellhorn, not in time to get Palmero. And I thought it was going to be a lot uh, easier at first base than it was, but by the time Bellhorn's throw got there, Palmero had just touched the bag. Moving to third base, Melvin Mora. So with one out, runners at first and third for the Orioles. What are you saying, Palmero is slower than he looks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the fielder's choice, 3-6. Rafi's at first. Tejada erased. Mora goes to third. And here's Javi. Lopez with an opportunity to plate that runner 90 feet away with one out. Runners at the corners for the Orioles. Delivery to Lopez right there for a strike, a fastball. 0-1 to Lopez, who has struck out swinging and grounded out. Lopez deep in the box. Javi had the entire day off yesterday. Back behind the plate tonight. 44 runs driven in. A dozen home runs for the right-handed batting catcher. He loops it towards center field. Johnny Damon not with a strong arm comes racing in. He makes the grab. Here comes the throw. Here comes Mora. And Mora will score standing as the tag was applied late by Jason Veritat. So the sacrifice fly scores Melvin Mora from third base had it been many other center fielders that run would have not scored but Johnny Damon does not possess a great throwing arm he has tremendous speed got to the ball and in fact he was running toward the infield in perfect position to make the throw but it was a weak throw up the first base side and Morris scores from third yeah you're right any accuracy he would have been out but it was way up that first baseline they tell Johnny Damon just to hit the cutoff man but on a play like that you can't hit the cutoff man got to try to get the out it was just not an accurate throw. 45th run driven in for Javi Lopez, scoring Melvin Mora at first base with two down, Palmero. And here's Karim Garcia. And Garcia looks at a strike on the inside portion of the plate. 0 for 2 is Karim against Pedro Martinez. And the fans have been on Karim all evening long. Remembering back to that incident last October in the American League Championship Series. Martinez working from the stretch. To the plate, and it's low a fastball. One ball, one strike. Garcia had a quite a return to the Orioles yesterday. He played for the Birds in the year 2000. Did not have a base hit in 16 at bats, and then yesterday in Kansas City, drove two balls out of Kauffman Stadium. One a two-run home run, the other a three-run blast. Left-handed batter. The pitch on the way to Garcia. A hard shot to Bellhorn at shortstop. Picks it up. Throws to first. That's the inning. But the Orioles have grabbed the lead. Their second a three-run inning of the night. We head to the bottom of the sixth. It's the Orioles six. The Red Sox three. Well, Orioles baseball is brought to you in part by AT&T Wireless Services by Geico, the sensible alternative by the Maryland State Board of Elections featuring Maryland's new touchscreen voting system. Well, Eric Bedard now with a 6-3 lead delivers to Kevin Euclid and he pulls it foul on the ground third base side. I say Jake Euclid, it's Jason Veritek. He's 0 for 2 tonight. Veritek, the switch hitting catcher. Bedard 
in his past couple of starts has looked up at the scoreboard and seen zeros for the Orioles tonight. The Orioles are scoring some runs for the young left-hander, and the delivery to Veritek is inside. One ball, one strike. Orioles baseball also brought to you by the Maryland Department of Tourism and the Maryland Department of Business and Economic Development. At Provident Bank, Orioles fans, what can Provident Bank do for you? By SK, taste the difference. 146 years of quality makes. The 1-1 pitch to Veritek, way inside. Two balls, one strike. Orioles baseball also brought to you by the American Red Cross. Call 1-800 Give Life today, and by Allstate. Are you in good hands? Two and one to the catcher. Ball three outside, three balls and one strike. Well, in the fourth inning, the Orioles scored three in the top of the inning. Boston answered with three in the bottom of the fourth. Here in the sixth, three on the board for the Birds. And now the Red Sox have bat in the bottom of the sixth. Three one delivery, pulled foul hard on the ground, third base side, off the ball boy's glove, up into the stands for a souvenir. Three and two to Jason Veritek. Veritek, Euclid, and Millar for the Boston Red Sox against Eric Bedard trying to even his record at four and four. Despite a 3.90 ERA coming into this ballgame. Veritek swings late and misses. Strike three. Seven strikeouts now for the Southpaw from Ontario and Canada. So Veritek down. Back against the Philadelphia Phillies on July 3rd in a no decision. Eric Bedard struck out 10 batters. That's his career and season high, of course. And the pitch inside to Euclid, who's 0 for 2. He has 7 tonight. You and I were talking to Ray Miller the other day about Eric Bedard. And Miller just raving about the mechanics of this kid and his tempo. The 1 0 pitch, two balls, no strikes inside. I mean, that very slow, very deliberate windup. The timing is beautiful. And then the ball just explodes out of his hand. Yeah, it's on you. The dart with that nice, easy motion, and now the fastball high, three balls, no strikes. Ray Miller's been telling John Parrish, watch Bedard. Yeah. Watch Bedard. Look at that windup, look at the tempo, and try to copy that. And Parrish has done that. 3 0 pitch on the way. And Euclid watches strike one. Well, yeah, you know, two left handers, guys that aren't imposing physically, yeah, yeah. but they bring the ball to the plate in the low 90s, sometimes for Parrish reaching the mid 90s with that fastball. The 3 1 delivery to Euclid, and it's lined foul into the stands left side. Yeah, don't, don't kid yourself. Parrish has really good stuff. Oh, he He's does. got a couple of unhittable pitches, but sometimes he gets too quick. Yep. So Ray Miller's trying to just slow down, watch Bedard, and do it the way he does it. And he's got a nasty slider and a good fastball, this John. Yeah, Perry. real good. Three and two to Euclid with one out. Right-handed batter awaits the pitch, and it's pulled foul again, lined. And this time, the ball boy is knocked to the dirt, to the warning track by that one hop shot. He's having a tough time tonight. Oh, yeah. He's going to be running up the flag, uh, the yellow flag. Hey, watch out. That time he got a tough in between hop and then very wisely sat down when the ball got there. Again, three and two to Euclid. And the pitch from Bedard. And another foul ball lined into that stance. Those folks down there better bring a baseball glove because that ball comes screaming into the stands that are very intimate to the field. And the, the youngster down there, maybe somebody asked him, Can I borrow your glove? The, the ball boy with a big smile on his face as he. Converses with the fans in the stands. Well, you'd better be paying attention down there. A full count. Again, the 3 2 pitch and fouled off to the right side this time. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Orioles radio network. Well, Kevin Euclid with a very good at bat here at Fenway Park. Fred Manfra. Joe Angel, Johnny Goldsmith, the first of three games over two days for the Orioles and the Boston Red Sox. A day-night doubleheader here tomorrow. We see some activity starting in the bullpen for the Birds. Looks like uh, Buddy Groom beginning to throw in the bullpen for the Orioles. Is left-hander Eric Bedard trying to get this second out of the inning, and Euclid providing a 
a very good at bats has fouled off several pitches. Just to think about Bedard he does have to throw generally a lot of pitches. He's now thrown 106 pitches. He gets a lot of strikeouts. Lots of foul balls. So he does have to work hard. 3 2 pitch to Euclid. And this is lined right to the third baseman Melvin Mora who does almost a split to reach down around the right ankle to make the catch of that hard hit line drive. But he finally got Euclid to keep the ball fair. <laughs> <laughs> so two down in the sixth. And that brings up Kevin Millar. Millar has walked and singled. He was aboard along with Bill Miller on Gabe Kapler's at that time game tying home run in the bottom of the fourth. Kevin Millar trying to generate something offensively this year for the Red Sox and having a tough time and a strike call to the right handed batter. Millar with an open stance playing first base tonight for Terry Francona. And the pitch on the way. And he swings and misses at a high fastball. That one clocked at 91 miles an hour up around the letters. And he's down on the count is Millar. 0 and 2. So approaching 110 pitches is Bedard. He already has seven strikeouts on the night. We're in the bottom of the six, two out. Orioles ahead, six to three. Bedard kicks, fires. And Millar watches that one break up, maybe six inches in front of the plate in the dirt for ball one. Well, he chased that high fastball, and then he shows him a breaking ball. Now he may even go higher with a fastball. Just keep climbing the ladder, get see how strikeout. high he'll go. Yeah, get that strikeout. Let's see. Bedard gets a sign from Javi. Now Eric kicks, comes to the plate one and two, and it's pulled foul in on the hands and pulled. By Millar to keep that count at one ball and two strikes. That's pretty good pitching, Fred. I mean, that high fastball, swing and a miss. Then a breaking ball that was low and outside. Then a breaking ball that's low and inside. So he's showing Millar all the uh, different heights. Now we'll see what he does. One and two again with two down. The delivery to Millar. Fly ball well hit the center field. Luis Matos turns, races back, looks up, it's gone. Straight away center field. Home run. Millar, his first since June 18th. It's now a 6 4 ball game. Orioles on top of the Red Sox at Fenway. Now, Millar got a high fastball, it looked like. And I think he wanted to throw it even higher, but he missed a spot. Sixth home run of the year for Millar, his 26th RBI, and that lead. Down to two, and here comes Melvin Mora from third base to talk. Well, he just yells across to Eric Bedard as Bill Miller will come up. Miller tonight has flied out and singled and scored a run. And the first pitch to Miller, and he takes a strike. Of course, Bill Miller last year, he was the American League's leading hitter, 326. We see the newcomer. Todd Williams beginning to throw in the Oriole bullpen. Pitch low. And it's a one ball, one strike count. No longer is. Yeah, Buddy Groom, I still see him out there, but he's ready to come in. He's not tossing right now. So a one ball, one strike count to Bill Miller. Gabe Kapler on deck. The Bedard delivery. And there's a strike at the knees on the inner portion of the plate. One ball, two strikes. That home run for the Boston Red Sox, their 129th home run of the year. The Orioles have hit 93 on the season. The delivery is swing and a miss, strike three. The eighth strikeout, final out of the inning, but the home run given up to Millar has made it a bit tighter here at Fenway. Six through in Boston. It's the Orioles six and the Red Sox four. Now Pedro Martinez comes out to work here in the seventh inning. Big B, Matos in the top of the order. Brian Roberts activity behind Pedro in the bullpen. Pitch outside to Larry. Big B has grounded out the first and struck out. He is one of seven Orioles to go down against Pedro Martinez, but they lead it six to four. Breaking ball at the knees for a strike one and one to Bigby. This program brought to you by authority of the Orioles and WBAL radio. Any rebroadcast or other use of the play-by-play -play description strictly prohibited. The 1 1 pitch, the left handed batter lines it and loops it into center field, a base hit. So Bigby is on. A leadoff single in the seventh. Seven. 
Mark Malaska and Romero Mendoza up and throwing in the bullpen for the Boston Red Sox. Luis Matos will come up. Luis looking for his first hit of the night. He is 0 for 2. Big B at first. The delivery and uh, Matos squaring to bunt and fouls it straight back. So the Orioles want to get Big B into scoring position. As Matos comes up, Luis this year has been successful twice putting down sacrifice bunts. He looks at third base coach Tom Treblehorn, who goes through his signs as to whether the Orioles indeed are going to have Matos lay down a sacrifice bunt or at least try to. And a quick throw to first, and Bigby gets back. Bigby singled a looping line drive to center field to start the inning. And now Matos at the plate with a one strike count. And bullpen still cranking it up. Malaska and Mendoza throwing for the Boston Red Sox. Pedro working here in the top of the seventh, trailing six to four. The pitch to Matos shows bunt, pulls back, and takes a high breaking ball outside. And ball one strike to Luis. Luis still trying to get things together at the plate. Yes. It's starting to get into his head. You can tell in the at bats when he thinks a ball is going to drop in for a base hit and it's taken away. He slumps his shoulders, walks around, uh, almost despondent. But right now, his objective is to get Larry Bigby to second base. And the delivery, and he bunts it right back toward the mound. Martinez will pick it up and go to first, and he executes what he was sent up to the plate to do, and that's put Bigby in scoring position at second base. So one down. As Matos does his job, and now Ryan Roberts will come up as the top of the order will come to the plate. Second baseman, number one, Ryan Roberts. Ryan tonight struck out his first two at bats. And then in the sixth inning, when the Orioles grabbed at that time a 6 3 lead, Ryan started it off with a base hit. Pedro Martinez looks back at Bigby. Here's the pitch on the way to Roberts. Ground ball to second base. Fielded there by Bill Miller. Throws to first. Second out, moving to third base. Bigby, but two down. And that brings up David Newhan. Newhan has singled, doubled, and grounded out in three at bats tonight. David Newhan just having a, a wonderful return to the big leagues. This is his third go round in the big leagues. New hand now hitting 420. Raised his average some seven points tonight. He has Bigby at the third base. Two down. The pitch to New Hand. Swing and a foul straight back to the screen. New Hand with 21 runs driven in. A four game hit streak now. He has now hit in 28 of his 30 Oriole games. And the Orioles got who is in the minor leagues in Oklahoma for. The Texas Rangers triple A the one strike pitch right there for a strike to new hand as he watched the fastball new hand had a clause in his contract in mid June that if he was not up with the Texas Rangers he could become a free agent and make a deal and he did with the Orioles and they're lucky to have him so the fans come to life with two strikes on new hand big B at third two out for the Orioles the pitch on the way to new hand rocked back from the plate by a breaking ball up. One and two to David. Newhand was having an outstanding year at the Triple A level, and he became available and interested the Orioles, and they executed the contract. And his very first at bat with the Birds, with a pinch hitting roll, hit a home run in Colorado. Here's the pitch on the way to Newhand. Fly ball, well hit the center field. Johnny Damon racing back. He has some room. He reaches up. It's over his head. Bounces off the wall. Bigby scores. Newhand racing around second. He will go into third base standing. He's coming around the plate. Here comes the throw, and Newhand is in. And inside the park, home run. A two run shot for David Newhand. Straight away center field. Johnny Damon made the leap over his glove, off the wall, and Newhand races around with Bigby scoring in front of him, and the Orioles lead this ball game 8 to 4. What a Cinderella season for David Newhan, and it continues. It has not yet struck midnight. Boy, he got a breaking ball, and he drilled it. Damon kept going back. He jumped at the wall. The ball got behind him. It hit the fence. 
and then trickled on the warning track. And by the time he came up with it, we told you Newhand can run, and he comes up with an inside the parker. Amazing. His fifth home run with the Birds, RBIs 22 and 23. And now Melvin Mora takes it inside. So the Orioles with an 8-4 to four lead over Pedro and the Bosox. And David Newhan, what an amazing return to the big leagues for the youngster. When you say youngster, he's, when you're talking our age, he is a youngster. But in uh, baseball age, getting up there, and the ball came to the plate, and Newhan sliding across, and the Orioles get the inside the park home run for Newhan, who's now gathering his breath in the Oriole dugout. And the 1 2 delivery up the middle and into center field, the base hit for Melvin Mora. Yeah, I think Tom Treblehorn is going to wind up on the disabled list the way he was motoring that shoulder around. I mean, waving Newhan home <laughs> very emphatically. And boy, Newhan really turned it on. And now here comes, uh, looks like Terry Francona, and he's going to make the move. Looks like Ramiro Mendoza will come out of the bullpen for the Boston Red Sox. Orioles leading 8 to 4. They will send. Uh, Pedro Martinez to the shower here in the seventh with two out two runs in on the inside the park home run by Newhand. Pedro leaves Orioles lead and here comes Mendoza. Let's pause. Well the Red Sox have been one of the worst defensive teams in baseball so far this year and on the inside the park home run by David Newhand Johnny Damon eventually got to the ball on the warning track out there. He threw it back in toward the infield to Manny Ramirez. His left fielder intercepted it and then he got the ball back to the infield bellhorn and then the relay was much too late to the plate. It's not too often Fred you're going to see a relay from the center fielder to the left fielder to the shortstop to the catcher. Now that's not the way that you work on those things that's for <laughs> Man, sure. Alive. Now Ramiro Mendoza the 32 year old has had a very disappointing run in Boston since he signed that free agent contract leaving the Yankees the first pitch to. Miguel Tejada is taken for a fastball strike. Now Bill Bradley was the last Oriole to hit an inside the park home run June 8th of 1990. Quite a while for an Oriole to have an inside the park home run and Tejada swings and misses strike two. Okay. And the last Oriole to hit an inside the park at Fenway Park was Paul Blair and he got it back to 1973. Wow. So Paul Blair the last one here at Fenway Park but tonight David Newham. Oh and two to Miguel Tejada with more at first base and the Orioles have scored three times three and a miss strike three a sinking pitch from uh, Ramiro Mendoza that's it for the Orioles but my my the Orioles again with a inside the park home run a two run shot by David Newham, and they have the lead eight to four after six and a half at Fenway. Well the Orioles have gone to the bullpen B.J. Ryan comes on to work here in the bottom of the seventh bunted at by Kapler right back to B.J. throws to first and one gone on one pitch. Well quite a night for Eric Bedard he works six innings tonight. Eric leads with an eight four lead gave up four runs all earned five hits a couple of home runs three walks but Bedard had eight K's in today's game and remember when your bank strikes out call K Bank the power of K www.kbank.net and maybe the most important thing Bedard finally got some runs to work with and he's got the eight four lead Johnny Damon watches the shot from B.J. Ryan and yesterday B.J. worked in Kansas City gave up a solo home run to Ken Harvey so you say what's so big about that. The big left hander delivers to Johnny Damon a late swing and a strike. It was the first home run that Ryan had allowed since June 30th of last year when Ruben Sierra hit a home run. It was a club record 81 games between home runs given up by B.J. Ryan a late swing and a foul off to the left side. The previous club record had been 63 and was done from the 78 to 79 by Don Stanhouse. B.J. Ryan who's had a terrific year out of the pen for the birds coming on here in the seventh inning and Johnny Damon swings late and misses strike three two down B.J. Ryan with that good fastball and he continues to be death against left hand hitters they've had two hits against Ryan the entire season left hand hitters B.J. Ryan 
has been in my book tops in the American League when it comes to setting things up and uh, unfortunately he hasn't had a lot of opportunities to set up for saves for her uh, Jorge Julio because of course the Orioles haven't been winning all that much right now they are nine games under 500 B.J. Ryan left handed batters hitting point zero three five against B.J. and here's uh, Mark Bellhorn he has a one ball one strike count I can see what B.J. could do if he ever got a chance to be a closer. And that that'd be very interesting. The one one pitch and Bellhorn takes strike two. Bellhorn has already struck out twice tonight. He has 105 K's already this year. Bellhorn leading the American League. And now he has a one ball, two strike count. Lopez gives the sign to Ryan. Here's BJ's delivery, and Bellhorn swings and misses again. Strike three. Three up, three down go the Red Sox in the bottom of the seventh. Bellhorn has struck out three times. Orioles lead it after seven, eight four here at Fenway. It's been a big night for the Orioles so far. They lead the Boston Red Sox 8-4. We go to the eighth once again. Here's Joe Angel. All right, Fred, thank you. Rafael Palmero leads off against uh, this right-hander, Ramiro Mendoza. Palmero, then Lopez, and then Garcia. And Palmero takes uh, a little bit outside for ball one. 35,023 in the ballpark here tonight, Fenway Park. Here comes the pitch, and Palmero takes it low and inside. The count 2-0. Now Palmero in this game is 0 for 2 with a sacrifice fly. Picked up his 55th RBI. Here's the pitch. And outside ball 3. 3 and 0 to Palmero. Well they certainly got the Pedro Martinez here tonight. Martinez who started the game as though he was going to be real tough. Here's the pitch. Palmero takes a knee high strike. He allowed only one hit in the first three innings. Actually, no hits in the first three innings. Here's the pitch. Palmero slices one foul. No hits in three innings with five strikeouts, nine up and nine down. And then he struck out Roberts to get the fourth inning started. And then all heck broke loose. In that frame, the Orioles got three runs on three consecutive hits in a sacrifice fly. Here's the pitch, and Palmero grounds it foul just to the left of home plate. New hand with the infield single and then Mora with a double and then Tejada with a two run triple and then Palmero hit the fly ball to drive in a run give him a three nothing lead. The Red Sox got even in the fourth inning on a home run by Kapler with two aboard. Palmero slices one foul behind third base and then the Orioles got three against Martinez in the sixth inning. They scored twice on a single by Tejada and then Lopez hit a fly ball that drove in a run. And then it was David Newhand with a two run inside the park home run in the seventh inning. Here's the pitch. Line drive up the middle, base hit into center. That ball went right over the back at second base. So Palmero, his first hit tonight. The leadoff man aboard, and now to bring up the right hand hitting Javi Lopez. Well, Rafi, since uh, the All Star break, uh, and uh, just before the All Star break, seems to be finding that swing that uh, will have him going to Cooperstown in the Hall of Fame. Right now he has hit in 10 of his last 11 ball games and that average is starting to get back up where he normally sees it approaching 300. Yeah lots of hits. Here's the pitch to Lopez and a breaking ball waved at by Javi and he missed it. But mostly singles by Palmero. He is still not driving the ball like he would like and looks like right now he's settling for base hits. Yeah trying to get the stroke back and then he'll start to. Uh, as you say driving the ball at least he hopes he will. Yeah he's hit only four home runs in about the past month and a half. Lopez takes a fastball that runs inside. Ever since he hit that two home run game back on June 12th, Palmero has hit only four home runs. It's only a matter of time. One and one to Javi Lopez. Mendoza ready and delivers. Low chopper slowly hit to third base. Right there is Euclid. Long throw, and Millar came off the bat. And they'll give Lopez the infield single. Ball it to, to third base, well behind the bag. Euclid had to make a very long throw. He threw a little bit wide, and it looked to me as though Millar came off the bag to catch that throw. No, he didn't. He stayed on the bag. Lopez just simply beat that throw. Yeah, Javi got down the line pretty good. And the Orioles with runners at first and second. Looks like we're going to have a pitching change coming up. 
See the left-hander Velasca had been throwing in the bullpen as Mendoza will leave. Well, you got Garcia, a lefty, coming up to hit, so they will make the pitching change with two aboard and with nobody out. And uh, with the Orioles right now enjoying the lead here, we have a pitching change in the top of the eighth inning. We'll be back with more play-by-play. Now well, the Orioles lead at 8-4. Mark Melasco, the left-hander, comes out of the pen uh, for the Boston Red Sox. Don't forget, turn back the clock night Saturday. Minnesota Twins in town. They'll be wearing throwback uniforms of the 70s. Call 888-848-BIRD or visit theorioles.com for your tickets. The celebration sponsored by SunTrust, Coca-Cola, and the Maryland Lottery. 8-4 Orioles, new pitcher on. Let's get back to Joe. Hi, thank you, Fred. Left-hander Mark Melasco. We just got called up today by the Boston Red Sox after the work against the left hand hitting Kareem Garcia who tonight against Pedro Martinez Garcia was 0 for 3. So Malaska delivers and Garcia takes a fastball inside one ball and no strikes. Garcia struck out looking against Martinez in the third then he popped out and then he grounded out. So tonight Garcia a very quiet night against Pedro Martinez but now out there against Malaska. Here comes a pitch. Fastball in on the hands and fouled away by Garcia. We count even up at one and one here. Fans, it is a New York style hotel in Baltimore's Inner Harbor. It's the Hampton Inn and Suites at the Inner Harbor. It's in the old USF and G building. It's a restored facility. Has a fitness center, indoor pool, much, much more. Hey, this is the place where I stay. The Hampton Inn and Suites, Inner Harbor. And the pitch on the way. Garcia takes it low and outside. This is Malaska's third go round with the Red Sox this year at the big league level one and one with a four point six zero ERA. Mark Malaska. M A L A S K A. As Garcia digs in. And the two one delivery on the way swing and a miss right through a fastball. It looked like a cut fastball. And Garcia missed it on the count two and two. Red Sox out there defensively with Euclid at third. Bellhorn and Miller up the middle. Millar right now behind the base runner at first base. Jason Veritek doing the catching. Ramirez, Damon, and Kapler in the outfield left to right. Now the 2 2 pitch on the way. A little breaking ball, a little chopper foul outside first base. On the SK scoreboard, in a big one in the National League in the Eastern Division, in the bottom of the eighth inning, the Phillies lead the Marlins 2 to 1. On a home run by Ricky Lede, his seventh. Great pitching matchup and a great pitch ball game there. A.J. Burnett against Kevin Millwood in that game. Now here's the 2-2 pitch on the way. Big breaking ball. He struck him out looking. He caught the inside corner. And for the second time tonight, Garcia goes down on strikes. And both times looking. So what a difference a day makes for Kareem Garcia. Yesterday in his Orioles debut, a two-run homer and a three-run homer in Kansas City. Tonight the Ophers. Now Bigby, he takes a call strike right there at the knees. Bigby tonight one for three. Had the single in the seventh inning and was on base when David Newhan hit the inside the park home run. Now Malaska delivers 0 and 1. Big breaking ball is a little bit too high to Bigby. Where's Fenway Park? You're going to see some inside the park home runs. And you'll see a lot of triples with all those different dimensions out there. It's an asymmetrical ballpark here. All kinds of nooks and crannies. All kinds of different angles out there. Bigby fouls it away off to the left. Well, just to the left of straightaway center field, it's 379. But then you go to the right of straightaway center field, and it's 420 out there, as you say, with lots of angles. Once the ball gets out there, anything can happen. And it did for David Newhand, collecting the inside the park. Two run home run. Well, you, there are the uh, different dimensions and the angles and the edges out there, the doorways. Well, Bigby hits a one bouncer to the back at third base to second for one. The relay too late to get the double play. And on the play, Palmero winds up at third. But they do get Lopez at second base. He's retired five to four. Big B safe on the fielder's choice. And now Matos up there with two outs. And, uh, you know, it's going to always be difficult to double up Larry Bigby because of his speed. But then 
Bill Miller is playing second base tonight and he is normally a third baseman for this Red Sox ball club and didn't quite turn it as smoothly as you, you might expect. And now here's Matos. Royals are ahead eight to four. We're in the top of the eighth inning. Matos who has been slumping miserably. Up there with a chance to produce with two outs here. Tonight Matos is 0 for 2. His last time up he laid down a beautiful sacrifice bunt. Lefty against righty. Malaska delivers and Matos bounces one foul off his foot. Last time Luis had a hit was last Thursday. Ouch. And that was the first game back after the All-Star break. And right now he's saying ouch as that ball went down off the foot and he's still walking off the paint. Yeah, the umpire will give him a, a few seconds here. He saw Tejada go through that. Just before he singled home a couple of runs. And that was back in the sixth inning. Mato stands in. Here comes the 0 1 delivery. Luis takes a fastball up and away. Orioles with eight runs, 11 hits. Boston with four runs, only five hits in this game. Two of them have been home runs, though. On deck is Roberts, but there are two outs here. And now Malaska, the lefty at the belt, delivers. Mato swings right through it. I think Matos right now is still feeling the pain of that foul ball. After he swung and missed, he walked outside the batter's box rather gingerly. So I think Luis right now is still thinking about that pain. Remember Matos earlier tonight on a great catch out there, banged his foot up against the wall in center field. Painful night for Matos. Here comes the pitch. And he takes it up and in. Well, the count two and two now. Mato's batting average is down to 224. He just has not had the consistency that he showed last year. This year has been overmatched. Now he stands in. Count two and two. Velasco will go to first. Too late. Bigby back in. Bigby good speed. He has had six deals. He is at first and Palmero is at third base with two outs. Same two teams again tomorrow. And then again tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow a day night doubleheader at Fenway Park. Here comes a pitch. Taking a fastball upstairs. Now three and two to Matos. We still don't know who's going to pitch the first game for the Boston Red Sox. Apparently Wakefield's going to pitch the second game, but the Red Sox continue to say TBA to be announced. The Orioles will have um, they know who they'll Borkowski will pitch the second game. And um, Rodrigo Lopez the first game. And Matos waits again. Here's the three two delivery breaking ball going the other way fouled away down the right field line slicing back into that lower deck. They'll do it again three balls and two strikes and then when the Orioles go home on Friday they'll be looking for a starter and no one knows right now but the conjecture is that it might be John Maine brought up from Ottawa to make that stop might be the main man because on Friday that will be his scheduled fifth day. Mato stands in the count three and two. Here comes the pitch. Fastball. He walked him. So now the Orioles have him loaded, and it'll bring up Mr. Bases Loaded, Brian Roberts. Now we know what Roberts has done with the bases loaded so far this season. Roberts has gone five for eight with a grand slam, and over his career with the bases loaded, just about a 500 batting average. Well, Brian Roberts in his career 11 for 23 with three grand slams and 37 runs driven in in this situation. Yeah, I said just about a 500. Million. And he takes a fastball for a call strike. That's the amazing thing. Roberts with three career grand slams. And I believe that Derek Jeter has never hit a grand slam for the Yankees. This year Roberts hit one against Colorado. Here's the 0 1 delivery up there hitting right handed and he takes up and away for a ball. Now you just pointed out something all of his grand slam has come from the first base side batters box as a left handed batter. Of course about 80 percent of the time he's hitting left handed. Here's the 1 1 delivery. Roberts takes one just off the outside corner. Roberts of course is a natural right hand hitter. So generally you have more power from your natural side. 
But because he hits right handed only about 20 percent of the time obviously the production would not be there as a right hand hitter. Here's the two one delivery now fastball missed badly up and away. Well the count three and one now to Brian Roberts. Orioles ahead eight to four. We're in the top of the eighth inning here. The situation where the Orioles can really put this game away. Remember this is Fenway Park a four run lead not all that big a lead. Here's the three one delivery and he swung at ball four and fouled it away. And he got a cut fastball on three and one. It would have been ball four but as soon as Robert saw the fastball with the bases loaded he chased it. Well the count three and two now. Palmero Bigby and Matos all on base with two outs. The lefty Malaska ready and delivers. And Robert swings and he hits a comeback right back to Malaska. He runs about halfway to first and then he will underhand the ball to Millard to retire the side. So they leave him loaded and here at Fenway Park we're heading to the bottom of the eighth that is eight to four Orioles. All right here come the Red Sox at Fenway Park we're heading to the bottom of the eighth inning and B.J. Ryan will go to work on the lefty David Ortiz. Orioles ahead eight to four. Ortiz 0 for 2 with a base on balls and he swings right through a BJ fastball. Well they can't own one. Ryan came on in the seventh. He got him one, two, three with a couple of strikeouts. Jason Grimsley ready to go in the bullpen. He's a right hander, and you have uh, Manny Ramirez and the switch hitting Jason Veritek to follow. So BJ Ryan delivers to Ortiz and uh, it is swung on and fouled away, back out of play. So it could be a situation where you see BJ Ryan up there against the lefty. And then we may see Lee Mazzilli bring in Grimsley against the right hander Ramirez. Remember there's a day night double header tomorrow and I'm sure Lee Mazzilli would like B.J. Ryan to be available tomorrow maybe for both games. And here's the pitch and there's a swing off the hands a ground ball the second right there is Roberts and he throws him out. So B.J. Ryan four up and four down so far. And yep here comes Lee Mazzilli he's going to bring in Grimsley now to go after Ramirez that way Ryan is available tomorrow and maybe for both games. So with the Orioles ahead eight to four here in the bottom of the eighth inning we'll be back with more play by play right after this. Out there in relief now Grimsley who has not been scored upon since the All Star break. He's made three appearances. So these days Grimsley pitching better. He'll go after Manny Ramirez. And here's a pitch and Ramirez a big cut and he goes right through it. Manny tonight's 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. All of that against the lefty Eric Bedard. And right now this is Bedard's game to win. He went six gave up four runs on five hits and he had eight strikeouts in those six innings. Ramirez digs in. That Grimsley to the plate. A little breaking ball in there that's a call strike. Say breaking ball. It looked like uh, that ball had a lot of sinking action to it. Looks like it dropped off a table. And of course, uh, for Grimsley, that is his bread and butter pitch. Sometimes a fastball for him can be a breaking ball. Here's the pitch. Same pitch. This one a little bit low and outside. Talk about Manny Ramirez. Manny, of course, one of the great offensive talents in the game these days. And one of the few time, few guys who when he's hot he can make hitting look easy. And he is having an outstanding year. Now the one two pitch on the way swing and a miss and no a foul tip and Lopez just couldn't quite hold the ball. Of course when Manny was a member of the Cleveland Indians and before he signed as a free agent here in Boston quite often in Cleveland Manny became guilty of forgetting how many outs there were forgetting the signs or missing signs or they're just very forgetful quite often here's the one two delivery swung on and fouled away off to the right over is Palmero has room and on the warning track he makes the catch along the camera well so Ramirez is retired and now it'll bring up Jason Veritek anyway when Manny became a free agent I remember down in Florida being interviewed and somebody asked Manny Ramirez about all those lapses all those moments of forgetfulness and there was a rumor going around that Manny Ramirez had been tested by the Indians 
for attention deficit disorder. And somebody asked Manny about that. They said, is it true that you were tested by the Indians for attention deficit disorder? And Manny thought about it and said, I don't know. If they did, I forgot about it. <laughs> so it might have been all true. Now here's the pitch to Veritek, and he takes a fastball outside. But one thing he hasn't forgotten how to do, and that's hit. Oh, man. man. That's just a, a natural ability for Manny Ramirez. There's Al Davis, the uh, former, in fact, still is the owner of the Oakland Raiders, as Veritek takes the ball inside. Somebody asked Al Davis one time about what makes a great football player. And Al Davis said, well, in order to be a great football player, you have to have that God-given killer instinct. <laughs> That's what Manny has as a hitter. Little chopper, one bouncer, two bouncer out to second base. Roberts in shallow right field, and he throws him out. And so it's a disjointed one, two, three. B.J. Ryan gets the first out, and then Grimsley gets the next two. So in Boston, we head to the ninth with the Orioles ahead, eight to four. All right now, the Orioles are coming up in the top of the ninth inning of a new hand, the lead off, then Melvin Mora, and then Miguel Tejada. So. They've got the two, three, and four hitters coming up, and they will do so against a new Boston pitcher, left-hander Jimmy Williams, on here to pitch. Orioles ahead eight to four. On the SK scoreboard, a final score: the Phillies defeated Florida two to one. Kevin Millwood winning over AJ Burnett. Billy Wagner picked up a 16 save, and Ricky Lede had the game's only home run. Well, one of the few times this season the Phillies have beaten. One of the other contending teams in the Eastern Division, Philadelphia, at the moment is leading the Eastern Division, pending the outcome of the Atlanta game. And uh, that's a final score. Pittsburgh beat Atlanta 4 to 3. And so the Phillies now have a one game lead. Left hander Jimmy Anderson. I'm in, did I say Jimmy Williams? Yeah, I was going to say he. I thought he, did, he got fired. Yeah, but he's got to find a new job. <laughs> Newhand swings and he fouls it away. Back out of play. No, not Jimmy Williams. Jimmy Anderson out there to pitch. Jimmy Williams fired as the Astros manager. And his replacement right now isn't faring too well. Phil Garner. Here's the pitch. A little breaking ball. A little bit low. Now the Orioles have 11 hits in this ball game tonight. Third consecutive game of 10 or more hits for the Orioles. David Newhand has three of them. What a night he's had. Breaking ball lifted into left field. Racing back, man. Back to the wall, looking up at the monster. And the ball is off the monster. Ramirez plays the carom with a bare hand. He gets it back into third base. And Newhand in with a standing double. He's had a four hit game. He's had two singles. He's had a double. And he's had an inside the parker. I love this guy. Well, this is the third time for the Orioles he's had a four hit ball game. Just a high, long, lazy fly ball that went about three quarters of the way up that green monster. And now here's Melvin Mora. You just have to wonder how many general managers and how many scouts are saying, boy, how did we miss? How did we miss this kid? And it goes back to high school. I mean, he's never been a big guy as Melvin Mora stands in here. And the left-hander Anderson delivers a high fastball. In high school, David Newhand was overlooked, and he was told he was too small to play baseball, which is ridiculous. But that's the way it was. David Newhand, he was always too small to do this, or not big enough to do that, or too much of this, not enough of that. Mora takes it a little bit low. So Newhand started to work out, lifting weights, and he built himself up. Became a pretty good ball player. In college, he went to Georgia, and he was overlooked there, too. It didn't work out at Georgia. Mora bounces one foul over the coaching box at third base. So, he eventually, he would transfer to Pepperdine. And that's when things began to work out. But even then, even though he played well at great numbers, as a professional, he was overlooked. And here he is at the age of 30, finally getting a chance to play. And, boy, you talk about cashing in. Morris swings and he lines it into left center. There's nobody out there. 
That's going to be extra bases. New hand will score. The ball is off the scoreboard and Mora loping into second base a stand up double. It is nine to four Orioles and Melvin Mora tonight has had three hits been on base four times. He has scored twice and now he's not going to run. And the Orioles hits just keep on coming. We mentioned about the Orioles being in double figures for three consecutive games 15 of their last 26 and they've now reached double figures and hits in 50 of their 92 ball games. Now here's Miguel Tejada. Anderson delivers low and inside for a ball. Well, tonight we've had two Orioles each come up with a four hit game. David Newham and Melvin Mora and they went back to back in the batting order. There comes a pitch and Tejada swings and he grounds it foul outside third base. Well, you know what Fred the way things have gone this season as far as the Boston Red Sox are concerned the Orioles are the best team in baseball. Well last year the Orioles played Boston tough they didn't come out with a lot of wins They're always close games but the Orioles came up short. And here's the pitch to how to take the ball that bounces it. But this year geez remember we came in for that one game before heading off uh, and uh, the, the Orioles have just hit so well against this Boston ball club and uh, the Red Sox last year I can remember talking to several guys on the, the Red Sox team saying we dislike playing the Orioles because yeah. we know they uh, can beat us. Well tonight they scored eight runs against Pedro Martinez. Tejada hits it toward the monster way back in left. It's off the monster. That will drive it a run. Melvin Moore around third coming in to score and Ramirez plays the carom. He guns it back into second base and Tejada very wisely held it first. It's an RBI single. Tejada with a five RBI night. And now closing in on David Ortiz. Are we sure it's not Jimmy Williams on the mound? <laughs> wow. Now the pitching coach Dave Wallace is coming out to visit with the left hander Jimmy Anderson. Ramirez did a good job defensively played the carom and Tejada with a five RBI night and now with 85 for the year and he is now only two behind David Ortiz for the lead in the American League. How about that. First baseman, number and now here's Rafael Palmero. Yeah, Tejada with a two run triple, a two run single, and now an RBI single. And now the lefty Palmero digs in. Here comes the pitch and taking low and outside for ball one. Well, it is now 10 to 4 Orioles, and this one has turned into a laugher. On deck is Javi Lopez, and still there is nobody out in the ninth inning. And the pitch to Palmero taken for a strike on the outside corner. Well, Palmero in this game is one for three. He also hit a fly ball that picked up an RBI back in the fourth inning. Anderson ready and delivers. Palmero slices one foul behind the third base dugout. And back toward the second level here at Fenway Park. We'll pause here for station identification along the Orioles radio network. It's to Palmero taken in the dirt. Ball gets away momentarily, but there's no advance. Tejada stays at first. That's on the SK scoreboard. The Phillies beat the Marlins two to one. So the Phillies now with a one game division lead in the East. In the bottom of the eighth inning the Mets at one time had a four nothing lead over Montreal and the Expos have come all the way back to tie that game. Richard Hidalgo hit number 14 for the Mets but they're tied up 4 4 in the eighth inning. Palmero hits a one hopper to third on to second with the shortstop covering to get one and the relay in time to get the double play. So that will go five to six to three for the double play something you don't often see the result of that infield shift against Palmero. Yeah Euclid is playing where the shortstop Bellhorn normally would and Bellhorn playing probably where the second baseman would so it worked out that way. Now here's Javi Lopez and he takes a call strike. Also in the National League 
St. Louis has a one nothing lead over Milwaukee in the seventh inning. How about those Cardinals. Here's a pitch. Lopez takes a high fastball. Later tonight let's see Houston is underway at Arizona nothing nothing in the second inning. Arizona trying to end what a nine game losing streak right now for Arizona. There's a shot foul. Still all that talk about Randy Johnson being traded but they say before Johnson would be traded Steve Finley would be the first guy to go and then that would kind of cascade things down. One and two to Javi Lopez the Arizona ball club they've lost nine straight and of course earlier they had that 11 game losing streak. You talk about a long year. My goodness. I bet you deep down inside Randy Johnson wants to leave. Here's the pitch. Line drive toward right and that's a base hit. One bounce to Kapler. Who gets it back into second base. Oh Lopez. With a two hit night. And now it'll bring up Kareem Garcia one more time. And later tonight on the SK scoreboard it'll be San Diego at San Francisco. That'll be an interesting matchup there. In the National League Western Division, the Padres much improved. Right now they're third. The Giants are second in that division. Behind that Dodger ball club, the Giants are two and a half games out. And of course, the Dodgers right now in an eight game winning streak. And they're playing real good baseball. Here's the pitch. And Garcia takes the ball outside. Well, Kareem and Louis Matos, the only two guys in the lineup without base hits tonight for the Orioles. Right, Garcia's 0 for 4 with a couple of strikeouts, 0 for 3 against Pedro Martinez. Struck out twice, both looking. Here's the pitch. A little breaking ball. Tap foul just off the end of the bat. One and one now to Kareem Garcia. And just to get you updated in the American League. Final score, Texas beat Anaheim 3-2. to two. Soriano hit number 19 for the Rangers. Here's the pitch. Garcia takes a fastball strike at the knees on the inside corner. It's called. Detroit beat Kansas City four to two. How about those Tigers? Tigers in the American League Central Division are now 45 and 49. They are challenging 500. Swing and a fly ball heading for the right field corner. On the run, Kapler. He'll get there. He will make the catch in the side return. But they get two more. So now we head to the bottom of the ninth. It is now 10 to better Todd Williams is about to make his Orioles debut this year a right hander called up today as he delivers to Euclid who takes it low and outside for a ball Todd Williams 33 years of age and up until today he had been at Ottawa his contract purchased today and now Euclid takes a fastball strike on the inside corner talking to Lee Mazzilli before the game here tonight. And he told me that Williams is a sinker ball pitcher who can be very effective. A little breaking ball here chopped away and a foul ball off the foot. So primarily a sinker baller who does a pretty good job against right handers and left handers and a guy who can give you one or two innings out of the bullpen. I mentioned he's 33 years old at Ottawa his record was one and one with a couple of saves. And a 3.05 ERA. He had been in 14 games at Ottawa since signing a minor league contract with the Orioles back in mid-June. Swing and a fly ball lifted down the right field line on the run, but not getting there. And the ball landing in foul ground and then bouncing into that lower deck. So the count to Euclid is one ball and two strikes. Euclid in this game here tonight is 0 for 3. Orioles are ahead 10 to 4. We're in the bottom of the ninth inning at Fenway Park. Here's the pitch. There's that sinker. Line toward right. Base hit. Right past Palmero. Up with the ball is Kareem Garcia. He gets it back into second base. So Euclid gets a base hit here to start the bottom of the ninth inning. And now here's Kevin Millar. Orioles ahead 10 to 4. Todd Williams who has played parts of four years in the big leagues. Well, this guy's been around it. He has been with the Dodgers. He's also with Cincinnati, also with Seattle. 
And most recently, he was a, a member of the Yankee Ball Club a couple of years ago, where Lee Mazzilli became familiar with him. There's a shot toward left. That's a base hit. So right now, Todd Williams is not a mystery. As Millar gets a base hit, now with two aboard and with nobody out, it'll bring up the second baseman, Bill Miller. As a big leaguer, Williams has a record of three and three with a 537 ERA. And tonight, Williams is appearing in his 51st Major League game. So he's not exactly a rookie. Now Ray Miller is coming out. And the Oriole bullpen getting busy now. And the closer, Jorge Julio, has begun to get loose out there. Now the Orioles are ahead 10 to 4, but remember we're at Fenway Park, and in this ballpark, a six run lead can dissipate in a hurry. So Ray Miller continues the conversation out there. Well, if he is a sinker baller, that's a pitch that he has to stay with. Because if he throws a good one, that pitch will get you a double play ball. Bill Miller tonight, one for three. Euclid is out there at second base. Millar is at first base with nobody out. Orioles ahead here, 10 to four in the bottom of the ninth inning. Now the middle of the infield, double play position here. Melvin Mora backed up at third base. Here's the pitch to Miller, and he takes a ball outside. One ball and no strikes. Bill Miller, this guy's a tough out. Won the batting title in the American League last year. Well, he wound up with a batting average of 326. Right now, his batting average is only 268. Of course, he's been injured. Here's the 1 0 delivery. Miller sends a fly ball toward the monster. Racing back is Bigby. Back on the warning track, he jumps up and makes a one handed catch and then gets the ball back into third. So Miller just didn't quite get enough of that one. Bigby got to the back of the warning track and made a jumping one handed catch. And now here's Kapler. And now the Red Sox are going to the bench here. They're going to bring up Trot Nixon as a pinch hitter. So Trot Nixon will hit for Kapler. So it'll be right hander against left hander here. Williams a right hander, Nixon a left hander with good power. And here comes a pitch. Nixon takes a strike. He caught the outside corner. For the first time in the inning, Williams gets ahead of a hitter. Nixon with a very wide stance. Here's the pitch. And he takes it low and inside. Even up at one and one. Trot Nixon, of course, started the regular season on the disabled list. This is only his 25th game and only his 84th at bat. His batting average at 253 with three home runs and 11 RBI. The check swing and he takes the fastball up and away. So the count two and one now. And now Williams wants a brand new baseball to work with here. Nixon, who, when he came off the DL, finally got a chance to play, but then went into a miserable slump. I mean, at one time, he was only 7 for 41, but lately, he's begun to hit. Trot Nixon. Here comes the pitch. Nixon swings and he hits a ground ball to Palmero. The ball takes a bad bounce and bounces right over Palmero, and the ball is heading for the right field corner. Euclid has scored, and there's Malari. He goes to third base. And Nixon winds up with an RBI single. That ball took a wicked bounce. And Palmero could not get a glove on that ball. It bounced over Palmero. It is now a 10 to 5 ball game. I mean, Palmero was right there waiting for the ball. And it might have been a double play ball. But that ball took a really bad bounce. And so the Red Sox with a run in and with runners on first and third and Lee Mazzilli is coming out and he's going to bring in Jorge Julio here. And in this ballpark that's a good idea. I mean a five run lead 
can become a very precarious lead. So we'll be back with more play by play right after this. All right, Joe Angel, Fred Manfra, and Johnny BG, Johnny Goldsmith here at Fenway Park in Boston. Where all of a sudden, the Red Sox are making a comeback bid here. They have scored a run. It is now a 10 to 5 ball game, and now the top of the order coming up to hit in Johnny Damon. Runners on first and third. Jorge Julio in here. This is not a save situation because the tying run is not on deck. Only the ninth run is on deck. Johnny Damon today is 0 for 3, and he has been struggling as he stands in. Julio to the plate. Damon takes a good fastball for a call strike. Johnny Damon with only four hits in his last 28 at bats, including his 0 for 3 tonight. Now Julio sets again, right hander at the belt. Here comes a pitch, and Damon swings and hit double play ball to Tejada. Has it. He will step on second, and then on to Palmero in time to get the double play. And here at Fenway Park, the ball game is over, and the Orioles in the win column. It is their third consecutive victory. A big night offensively as they come up tonight with 15 hits. David Newhand with a four hit game. Melvin Mora with a four hit game. And Miguel Tejada with a five RBI night. They win it 10 to 5 here at Fenway Park. And we'll be back with the lovely totals right after this. <laughs> 